Thank you very much. Dear colleagues, uh, dear guests, uh, it is my honor on behalf of the team in the WHO Regional Office for Europe to welcome you at this 17th meeting of the National TB Program Managers and National Tuberculosis Point. With no further ado, uh, I would like to welcome Dr. Nino Dipuri and Dr. Teresa Kasaeva on behalf of the WHO uh, Regional Office for Europe and WHO Headquarters. Welcome you at this uh, at this meeting. So the first uh, welcoming word is uh, given to Dr. Nino Birzuli, director of, of country okay. health programs of the WHO Regional Office for Europe. Dr. Nino, floor is yours. Thank you so much. And do you hear me well? You hear? Okay, very good. So good morning. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, distinguished colleagues, I'm very pleased to welcome you to this uh, 17th meeting of the, the National TB Program Managers and the National TB Focal Points. Uh, these regular meetings are critical to share the technical updates, uh, facilitate and improve the coordination between the National TB programs and to address the challenges. Uh, this meeting is special since we will be updating you on the progress made on the development of the new regional TB action plan for the WHO Europe for 2023-2030, which will be uh, in September. An important part of the new regional action plan is that it was built on the feedback and the uh, from the open consultation meetings with member states, with technical partners, with the civil society organizations, which of course includes many of you who are participating today. And development of this new action plan for the European region is very timely. As we emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic and the, the war in Ukraine, which uh, resulted in in disruption of the services for the patients with the TB in the country, but also threatening continuity of care outside, uh, given the massive humanitarian crisis. And it is very important, given these developments, to take the stock and understand how we can build a forward TB response. But let's take the stock. Yes. Uh, uh, was the year of ANTB target report. Uh, so where we are? Et tout est bon? In the um, the WHO European region had the fastest decline in the TB incidence and mortality in the world, and is the only region that reached the 2020 anti-TB target with 25% reduction in TB incidence. The region was close to reaching the 35% reduction in the mortality target for 22 uh, and achieved a 31% reduction in 2021. The COVID-19 related disruptions have changed this trajectory and in 2022, the target was missed with the result only 26% reduction in the mortality. We also know that the progress is very uneven in the region. Uh, while most member states in Western European countries are on the path to achieve um, the TB elimination, progress in member states in the east part of our region is slowed by a uh, persisting high burden of drug resistance TB and the TB HIV co-infection. And we know that the European region is home to a quarter of the global number of the multi-drug resistance TB. Uh, and almost half of the pre-existingly DRTB, drug-resistant TB cases. 
the proportion of the drug resistant TB cases detected among new and the previously treated TB cases continued to significantly exceed the global average. And the TB uh, HIV infection rate is estimated at 12%, with uh, about 29,000 TB cases among people living with HIV in the region. And 2020 saw also an increase in the TB deaths among the HIV positive people and the treatment outcomes of HIV associated remains modest. So dear colleagues, the uh, agenda remains unfinished and we have yet to see a significant improvement in the MDR TB prevalence and outcome. So our work is not done yet. A high proportion of the estimated MDR TBs are still not diagnosed, and the late diagnosis is still persistent. And in terms of the treatment success rates, this uh, remained stable, uh, well below the targets. We must close these gaps uh, also on finding all people with TB, ensuring the universal health coverage through the TB preventive treatment across uh, access to the WHO recommended rapid molecular diagnosis, scale up and improve the quality of the testing for the drug resistance, improve the uptake of the fully oral treatment regimens, address the comorbidities and the co-infection and the reduced transmission of tuberculosis. We have to also note that the people affected by TB still face the barriers to accessing care, including the financial barriers prior to being diagnosed. And we also note the slow adoption of the robust patient support and addressing comprehensively the needs of people when they are on treatment. It might take us years to get back on track for the most progress due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the war in Ukraine. So therefore the renewed political and the financial commitment is required to get back us on track from anticipated loss and progress uh, in um, ending TB in the region. But despite all these challenges that uh, we are facing, uh, we are living in exciting time for uh, TB area. New technologies, new diagnostics, the fully oral medicines for the MDRTB, the digital health solutions, and innovative service delivery approaches are, of course, helping us to reshape the TB response. We, uh, of course, appreciate the high level of interest, engagement, and support of member states, as well as the, the partner organizations. Uh, uh, we uh, have considered uh, and addressed all inputs that have been provided by the, the member states, uh, the partners, the society during the open consultation process in the, in the process of the preparation of the regional action plan. And we aim for the robust and ambitious document with uh, joint ownership and the co-creation um, that will support our efforts and the commitments to end TB uh, by 2030 in the WHO European region. We are committed to continue working with you all, with our member states, with our partners and the civil society and organizations to ensure that uh, the regional action plan is adopted in September 2022. I extend uh, my thanks to, to you all, to our participants today and wish you a very productive and successful meeting. And now I would like to pass the floor to Dr. Teresa Kasaeva, Director of the Global TB Program, who has been very instrumental in supporting the Euro region in, in this uh, process of uh, regional action plan development. So uh, Dr. Teresa, the floor is yours. So, thank you very much, um, Dr. Nina. Uh, it's great pleasure uh, to join you today at this important meeting. Warm greetings on behalf of the Global Tuberculosis Program and uh, myself to all the colleagues. Um, I, I would like to start with uh, uh, words of appreciation, acknowledgement, and thank uh, to all of you for your hard, dedicated work and uh, fight against uh, TB. I know that many of you have been also involved in the in the efforts and fight against the COVID-19. 
um, uh, I would like also to share our deep concerns um, uh, on behalf of all colleagues from WHO about the, the humanitarian crisis in, in Ukraine and uh, in the region uh, due to the uh, armed conflict uh, against Ukraine. And Ukrainian people uh, now are in the unprecedented, very difficult situation uh, where the number of people internally dis uh, displaced uh, is growing. It's more than 7.7 .7 million and uh, uh, including more than 6 million uh, that were uh, uh, people fled Ukraine into countries neighboring. Um, we know that uh, colleagues from the national TB programs are working in the unprecedented circumstances and uh, I, I, we would like to applaud uh, to their hard work and courage and the dedication and to, to reassure uh, that we are next to you with you and uh, I would like also to highlight uh, and applaud to the work of uh, colleagues from European uh, um, WHO European office and especially uh, country office in in Ukraine. So uh, this is our mandate and we will continue doing our, our best uh, for all, especially for the most vulnerable people. Uh, over the past uh, uh, two and a half years, we've been facing uh, uh, COVID, uh, 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 overcoming COVID-19 pandemic and uh, uh, it was difficult time now again, since we, we, we are facing a new unexpected issues and uh, um, sometimes we're receiving question, is it the right time to, to focus on, on TB and request prioritization of TB efforts? And we are repeating again and again that, uh, uh, yes, uh, this is uh, uh, the time when we should join our efforts and to finish our unfinished agendas, as Dr. Nina highlighted, um, uh, that um, yes, uh, people with TB unfortunately are among the most the most vulnerable, and we should double and triple our efforts to do our best uh, to 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 support them. Um, Dr. Nina has already. Um, uh, highlighted um, uh, our current uh, situation and what 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 is uh, the progress uh, to date and definitely a european region is uh, uh, among uh, just few regions uh, that moving forward uh, quite impressively faster than other regions uh, in terms of uh, declining the incidence and tb mortality um, and uh, reaching uh, NTB strategy milestones, but in the same time, uh, progress is not enough and it has been severely impacted by COVID-19. Oh, we still can see dramatic drops in TB notification. Uh, we, we, despite of all the efforts, we didn't yet recover all the services and much more uh, supposed to be done. Uh, now, according to our latest data, we can see that um, more than uh, we can uh, see that uh, still more than 4.1 million people are missing uh, essentials, life-saving services, TB diagnostics, and uh, treatment. Uh, we can see that uh, in terms of reaching our global TB targets, we're also off track uh, at the global level, but still it's not the reason to give up uh, and it's just the reason to find the better ways and transform our challenges into the opportunities and we have uh, the opportunities. Uh, so uh, that's why I'm, I'm very pleased to see um, this uh, uh, development of the new regional TB action plan uh, for 2023-2030 and we should learn lessons from COVID and we should find better and um, innovative way, uh, ways in um, uh, work in the integrated manner uh, to uh, not only be back on track but also provide further progress. Um, this is a year of uh, of a review of our progress towards uh, uh, UN high level meeting political declaration targets and also the year when we started preparations to the next high level meeting in 2023 and it, it will give us another opportunity uh, to uh, put a, a very um, a strong and clear targets and commitments and that's why I'm looking forward to 
feedback from you uh, as the uh, outcome result of this meeting. What is your vision? So what could be done better? What we should highlight more? Maybe some areas that was not uh, uh, was not covered and uh, um, what are the essential gaps we, are, uh, we can see all together. So um, uh, of course, uh, we, should, we should continue moving according to this vision of multi-sectoral um, uh, collaboration and accountability. We had uh, yesterday um, a webinar with more than 200 people attending, a lot of questions. And uh, from this uh, webinar and from uh, um, many other activities, we can see that definitely this is the right way where, uh, where we should move all together. TB deeply depend on social determinants and uh, uh, social economic crisis is already affecting our progress and will affect more if essential important measures will not be, will not be undertaken. So uh, with this uh, moving forward, building back stronger, uh, we have uh, uh, we have still a chance uh, to reach our targets. I strongly believe and would like to encourage you also uh, to be optimistic uh, uh, despite of all the issues. And we have reasons for this uh, optimism. Of course, you are aware that uh, WHO is working on the um, development and update of the guidelines, and uh, we see uh, dramatic progress. Uh, Dr. Carmina uh, just told that we have uh, much better options for the diagnosis, for, for the treatment, fully oral, uh, two, three times shorter treatment options, even for patients with drug resistant TB. And uh, the latest news probably uh, you've seen from our rapid communications uh, that for the first time we will have six months uh, treatment options options for patients with drug resistant TB. We, we have now even a uh, shorter option, four month uh, option for the treatment of drug susceptible TB. And uh, now the question is to all of us, how uh, fast we will uptake this option and introduce them into practice. So uh, this is still uh, the, the, the remaining question. And again, we would like to hear from you what are the main bottlenecks and what we can do uh, better together. Uh, uh, also, I'm sure that you are following uh, these um, innovative tools we are releasing. One of them is TB Knowledge Sharing Platform, which uh, provides faster digital access to all our latest guidelines. Mm -hmm. we, we, are, uh, uh, we are looking for your feedback, so what we can optimize and do, uh, do better. And uh, I think that there is always space for the improvement and optimization and to address your needs. I would like to add and my uh, speech with uh, uh, highlights that the role of NTP managers is remaining central. You are the key drivers of all the processes within uh, TB programs, within health sectors, and also beyond. When we are talking and, uh, about multi-sectoral uh, actions, uh, without your key role and without your vision, it will not be also possible. So uh, that's why uh, I, I would encourage you um, to continue working jointly with WHO and finish our unfinished uh, agenda. And uh, of course, for, for, to, to make it all possible for our patients with TB, you should remain uh, safe. Um, and uh, we would like to reassure uh, you in our continued support and collaboration. Thank you. Thank you very much, Teresa, for your welcoming remarks. Uh, we uh, very highly appreciate uh, your participation, support, and uh, oversight. And uh, with no further ado, um, I would like uh, to move explaining the uh, scope and purpose of this meeting, as well as the meeting objectives of, uh, and uh, overview uh, of the uh, agenda. So before that, I would like to ask dear participants, would you please mute your microphone until you are asked to unmute uh, and start your presentation. This meeting is being hosted in English language as a working with the Russian translation as simultaneous provided. So there is a button in the uh, bottom of the window that you can switch uh, either to English or to, rise, uh, to, to Russian language. If you ask a question, would you please write that in the chat window or uh, raise your hand uh, during the discussion session and you will be invited to speak. 
Uh, we have been preparing and provided all the information materials in the folder uh, that is available on this following uh, or link. Next slide. Uh, the scope and purpose of this meeting is the uh, also targeting the target audience of the national tuberculosis managers and national tuberculosis focal points of the member states of the WHO European region. We also are welcoming partners and representatives of community and civil society organizations, as well as affected communities. Uh, but um, we also are privileged to have the observers of the uh, WHO regional platforms as a regional collaborating committee for TB, HIV, and viral hepatitis, regional green light committee, and European laboratory initiative. The objectives of this uh, 17th NTP managers and national TB focal points meeting is first is to update on progress on development of the new tuberculosis action plan for the WHO European region 2023 and 2030. Also to present the WHO Europe and partner efforts on ensuring access to TB and drug resistant TB treatment and care for refugees from Ukraine in Europe. Uh, to share the latest uh, information from the WHO on development of treatment guidelines on uh, drug susceptible TB and drug resistant tuberculosis and also to update on plans for this 2022 by the WHO Europe to provide support on tuberculosis preventive systematic uh, treatment, systematic screening for tuberculosis disease, tuberculosis diagnosis, and treatment, as well as uh, research and innovation. Uh, with no further, uh, so did we expect uh, that at the end of this meeting, uh, you, uh, dear participants, uh, and partners uh, will technically endorse the final draft of the tuberculosis action plan for the WHO European region, uh, the advanced version that we have shared uh, with you before, so that we also expect that you're familiar with the latest developments on the treatment of drug susceptible TB and drug resistant tuberculosis uh, that is key important for our region. And also that you are engaged in the implementation of the tuberculosis preventive treatment, systematic screening for TB disease, tuberculosis diagnosis, treatment and care, as well as research and innovations. And we all work together on that. So with no further ado, I would like to give a floor to our first speaker, Dr. Georgi Kutcher, who will provide an update on epidemiology of tuberculosis in the WHO European region and also highlighting the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Georgi, floor is yours. Um, thank you. Thank you, Askar. Uh, good morning and good afternoon uh, as well to those colleagues who are connected from the uh, eastern part of the region. Um, in my presentation, I will talk about the uh, um, uh, I will talk about the TB epidemiology in the region as well as um, uh, we'll talk about the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on TB detection uh, and treatment. Um, on this slide, we see the most obvious impact of COVID-19. Uh, we observed 24% drop in new and relapsed TB notifications in 2020 compared to 2019. Uh, 164,000 cases were reported in um, 2022 compared to uh, 216,000 cases that were reported in 2019, and the drop was uh, nine, eight, the the drop was 18 um, percent at the global level. Um, as a result, the gap between uh, the number of people falling ill with TB uh, in 2020, which is the green line uh, on the slide, and the number of uh, diagnosed and reported, uh, which, is, um, uh, which is a black line, uh, further increased uh, at the global level. And for the first time, uh, it's outside the uncertainty range uh, or interval for our region, uh, outlining the issue of possible under diagnosis of, of, of TB uh, in WHO European region. 
We've started collecting monthly data on uh, TV notifications uh, to monitor the trends in countries and overall uh, for the region. Um, data entry screen is set uh, in the Global TB database and countries are encouraged um, to report data uh, to WHO. Uh, and then this data is published regularly on, on WHO website. Um, 28 countries reported data for all uh, months uh, of 2021. Um, but uh, 18 countries um, that account for 70% of total cases notified in the region further reported monthly data for the first quarter of uh, 2022, uh, January, February, and March of this year. And those countries are included in the, in, in the analysis that is presented on the slide. Um, overall, for the region, we see increasing notifications in 2021 compared to 2020. Um, but uh, monthly notifications are far below the average uh, notification, um, monthly notification uh, for 20, 2019. Um, it's too early to draw any conclusions for 2022, uh, as notifications reported um, for the first three months are uh, still preliminary, and we expect these numbers uh, to change in the coming months. Another way of looking uh, at this is to see the year-to-year -year change in TB notifications. Uh, in normal circumstances, we expect the change to fall under the 10% interval, uh, either increase or uh, decrease, uh, with zero showing no change at all compared to the previous year. And after 24% drop in 2020, as you can see, there was almost no change uh, in 2022 overall uh, for the region. Uh, but back in 2020, WHO estimated the incidence of TB to increase in 2021, with peak expected to come in 2022. And uh, these are the modeled projections for some of the high burden countries, uh, including a few countries uh, from our region. Uh, some of the country examples presented on this slide support this uh, projection. Uh, we see the increasing notifications in 2021 compared to 2020 uh, in these selected countries, uh, but, but still these are based on the provisional data for 2021, and we, we have an ongoing data collection uh, ha happening at the moment in, in the region and globally as well. Uh, globally, 1.5 million deaths were estimated in 2020, uh, which is up from 1.4 million in 2019. Estimated number of TB deaths also increased in WHO European region, mainly due to increase in HIV positive uh, mortality. And as you remember, we were observing the highest rates of decrease uh, in our region before pandemic. And this obviously had some negative impact uh, on reaching the regional and global targets, but we'll uh, talk about this uh, a bit later. Um, these are the results of the same modeling done by WHO uh, for the selected, again, high TB burden countries. And deaths are likely to peak in 2021, but then again, the downward trend is expected. Two countries from the European region with the highest burden were also part of uh, this special analysis. Um, this is a snapshot of the epidemiological data on burden of uh, TB and MDR-TB in, uh, in the region. Uh, these are the latest available WHO estimates. Um, a little over 230,000 cases were estimated to have TB uh, in our region with uh, 69 thousand uh, rifampicin resistant cases and uh, with uh, 29 uh, TB cases co-infected with, uh, with HIV. TB burden is unequally distributed among countries of the region. 82% of uh, TB cases are 
found in the 18 high priority countries uh, of the region with the rate almost five times higher in high priority countries than in uh, EUEA countries of the region. Uh, percentage of TB cases co-infected with HIV almost doubled uh, over the last decade. Um, and people with co-infection have um, uh, seven times higher risk of uh, of uh, falling uh, of, of failing the treatment and three times higher risk uh, of losing their lives than people affected by TB only. So HIV significantly increases the risk uh, for TB patients. Uh, management of TB HIV co-infection is still suboptimal in the region. In 2020, 55% of HIV positive TB cases were successfully treated, uh, which is uh, lower than the global rate of 77% uh, treatment success rate. Uh, in 2020, 68% of people living with HIV uh, and eligible for TB preventive therapy started uh, the, the actual therapy along with uh, antiretroviral uh, therapy, while we aim to aim this to be as close as uh, to 100%. Uh, possible 100%. Uh, when, when looking at the treatment outcomes um, in the different groups of patients, we see a slight improvement for the last five years. Uh, treatment success rate among um, MDRTB increased from 51% in 2015 to 56% in 2020. And uh, the, the, the progress was especially obvious in the group of XTRTB cohort. Uh, the increase we see it's from 27% in 2015 to 51% uh, in 2020. But overall, the treatment success rates uh, for new and relapsed TB as well as for um, MDRTB patients are still below regional and, regional and global targets. Um, these are the main determinants for TB, uh, the estimates of TB cases um, attributable to five risk factors, uh, and this is for 2020. Um, and these are the groups where we should um, really focus on, uh, focus our efforts on. Uh, if we look at the progress made during uh, 2015 and 2020, WHO European region was um, on track to reach the NTB milestones and regional TB action plan targets of reducing the number of deaths by 35% in 2020 compared to 2015. But this progress was um, affected with the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and unfortunately, we were not able to, to, to meet this target. But uh, the region still managed to reach the target on TB incidence rate reduction uh, by 25% in 2020 compared to 2015, becoming uh, the only WHO region uh, to reach uh, this target. Um, this is the three-year progress of reaching the UN high-level meeting targets on TB preventive treatment, uh, which is overall off track uh, in, the, in the region. Um, and some of the main challenges in reaching preventive treatment targets include the issue with the coverage among children under five, which remains low in uh, some of the countries. Um, also, the household contacts aged more than five years are not uh, systematically treated in some countries. And unfortunately, we have a very low coverage with uh, TB preventive treatment uh, reported among people living with HIV. Uh, this could also be an issue of uh, reporting rather than uh, the actual issue of enrollment uh, of people on TPT. Uh, during the UN high-level meeting, uh, member states also committed to treat 1.23 uh, 20, uh, million people with TB, and these are our regional uh, targets. Um, half of them were already treated uh, during 2018-2019, so during the first three years of, uh, of, of five-year period, which is a good progress, but still not uh, enough, to, uh, enough pace to reach the target uh, by 2022. 
Um, the progress is um, similar among children with TB and those uh, needing the MDR TB treatment. Thus, the overall the enrollment needs to be accelerated uh, to, to reach um, the targets by 2022. I think this was my last slide. Um, thank you for, for your attention and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Thank you very much, Georgi. Again, uh, if there are any questions, dear colleagues, would you please put them in the chat window? Uh, and uh, following the updates on the current epidemiological situation with tuberculosis and the impact of the COVID-19, we're moving forward to hear the updates on the WHO uh, Europe on ensuring continuity of treatment and care for TB among refugees from Ukraine in response to the humanitarian crisis in Europe as a result of the war in Ukraine. And I would give a floor to present this topic to Dr. Stella Bivol, the strategic advisor on infectious diseases to the divisional director uh, at the uh, Division of Country Health Programs in Europe. Thank you. Thank you, Oscar. Uh, good afternoon, good day, uh, good morning, colleagues. Uh, good to greet you today. I hope this meeting finds you in good health and standing. I'll make an update on behalf of the whole TB team on the current situation with the res uh, response to the refugee crisis. But before that, I, I just wanted to make a few remarks on the overall uh, situation that uh, while we are still recovering in the aftermath of COVID impact across the region, our meeting today comes at a time when Europe is facing fastest unfolding refugee crisis since uh, 1945. And uh, we already heard that, according to the UN, military by the Russian Federation has forced over a quarter of Ukraine's population, more than 13 million uh, people, uh, of which 7.7 internally and more than 6 million refugees outside Ukraine. And more than a third of the entire population in Ukraine needs humanitarian as as assistance. Across the three levels, WHO has been engaged in Ukraine and supporting the host countries. Uh, as the health cluster, uh, WHO is coordinating the overall response with health partners and the emergency teams in, um, in uh, Ukraine provide on-site support to health uh, workers. To date, it delivered uh, diagnostics, medicines and trauma kits, ambulances and much more. WHO is also committed to address immediate health challenges and supporting the future reconstruction of the health system. And these days, our regional director is in Ukraine to discuss with the Ministry of Health and the partners about the recovery and reconstructions. Now, since February, to, uh, since February over 5.5 million or 6 million, many women and children have fled the war in Ukraine to the neighboring countries and further. During this time, People have opened their homes and governments have extended their national systems to deliver support and care, including much needed health coverage to those flee fleeing the conflict areas. However, additional resources and adaptations are required to assist refugee hosting countries to ensure full coverage. So uh, now uh, uh, moving to the next one, uh, um, I will provide a brief, brief overview of the regional efforts and uh, a bit of update We've been uh, uh, contacting you uh, over time uh, and uh, uh, since February, uh, uh, just uh, a few times okay, uh, already. So when people started fleeing the conflict zones across the borders, the immediate challenge was to estimate the number affected by different communicable diseases who may be in need of service continuation, linkage to care, as well as resource needs and admit needs. So we've been in close contact with the NTP Ukraine uh, and um, uh, throughout this uh, time uh, to understand how to best uh, do it. And uh, inside Ukraine, uh, they were a well-prepared contingent planning and patients were uh, supplied with medicines for uh, a number of uh, months. Uh, and uh, this has helped uh, for those who are fleeing the countries, for some of them uh, to have supply of uh, uh, now, uh, the team has developed an estimation approach based on disease burden in the uh, population groups uh, and uh, based on uh, uh, what we've uh, heard already and the notification rates in, uh, in, uh, in, in Ukraine and the estimated notification rates, bearing in mind some estimates, uh, the fact that 33% uh, are estimated with uh, drug-resistant TB 
and uh, of them, uh, about a, a less than a third would be with pre-XDR TB, and 22% would be HIV positive, understanding that the, um, the population of people living with HIV is uh, estimated at, uh, two, uh, uh, at uh, uh, 24, um, uh, almost 2,500,000 people, of which 130,000 are on ART. Uh, then these disease burden was extrapolated to a specific population group to estimate the number of uh, incident TB cases and using the UN, UN, population, UN population estimates uh, to arrive an, at an estimated incidence, bearing in mind again that female, women, children, and male over uh, 60 are eligible for crossing uh, Ukrainian border. Next. So uh, now in terms of denominator, uh, the initial um, uh, method was to uh, base uh, our uh, estimations on the uh, number of people who have been um, reported by the UNHCR. Uh, now, uh, in time, this has become a less precise um, denominator because uh, it has um, We've, we've seen a number of um, uh, trends. Uh, one, that the border crossings are not uh, necessarily the number of people who stay in the neighboring countries and people uh, move uh, further. So uh, those border crossings that you see on the right uh, are uh, uh, including all people who have crossed the border to that uh, country, but not necessarily those who stayed. Uh, and uh, it is estimated that the large number of people have moved onwards to other countries. So then next, uh, in, uh, in, uh, it, 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 there was a need for a bit more granular data in terms of understanding of uh, short media term destinations of people living in the Ukraine. So uh, while this is not an official uh, data source, it provides some specific information on trends uh, without being necessarily uh, very specific or um, citable for, for the uh, numbers and the number of people. It uses uh, the metadata that is shared with the UN, uh, UN agencies. Uh, to uh, based on geolocation to understand where people are uh, in, in the countries based on their uh, uh, initial uh, location uh, from Ukraine. And it's done for uh, just uh, over two, uh, three, the first initial months after um, an emergency is happening. So uh, what it has become apparent is at first uh, that uh, there is a much larger number of host countries and uh, uh, the, than uh, what we are seeing from the HCR data. And you see on the left the number of countries that are the largest uh, um, hosting countries. That is Poland, Germany, Czechia, Italy, Hungary, France, Spain, Slovakia, Belgium, Netherlands, Turkey, to, to, to name the, the, the top 10. Um, the, the second trend was that the initial, the, the first point of entry, uh, and we've seen the first point of entry through the cross-border uh, data, the average length of stay is around eight days and people move uh, to uh, the next uh, country. And uh, so uh, because uh, in the Schengen space, there is no way to uh, track people across the border, then the second transition is less recorded. And uh, in time, it will rely on the number of people who have uh, sought uh, asylum uh, and those who have registered for temporary protection. But for now, uh, this data is still incomplete. So. Um, the, uh, in this uh, second transition, uh, people are staying a uh, different amounts of time. There's also a third trend uh, that has been already um, uh, um, seen, observed, is pendular, the so-called pendular movement. That in the past weeks, many already have returned and continue to return home. And uh, that makes about 30,000 Ukrainian refugees returning to Ukraine every day. And according to IOM, it's estimated that uh, almost uh, 3 million have returned home. So this uh, provides a very challenging uh, environment to plan for resources and to understand how to best uh, plan for uh, ensuring continuity of services, uh, given that uh, the number of people uh, changes over time in each of the country and the uh, 
It's basically um, relying on their access to treatment rather than finding them uh, actively. So based on that, uh, next please. Uh, we, the best way to, to, to look into estimating the resource needs is uh, the, the tool that has been um, developed by uh, our team uh, and uh, Georgi particularly, where uh, once you include the number of people uh, that you have uh, as your target, it provides you a, a very simple way to um, uh, estimate how many people would need treatment and uh, how many of them would need MDR-TB treatment or pre-SDR-TB treatment, including children. And since if we are to put, for example, 3.5 million, uh, we see it would be about 1,400 people, adults with a TB across all the countries that we've named. And it's uh, about uh, uh, 20 countries that are now uh, in Europe, the top uh, receiving countries. Um, so the margin of error is high and the actuals are also an issue, uh, basically uh, based on the, the Ukraine side, we are seeing much smaller numbers of people who are reported to be outside and who are on, on, on treatment. So it becomes a challenge of uh, uh, basically understanding how to identify a needle in a stock of hay. Uh, especially because uh, there are more pressing health priority uh, needs and uh, there's um, much more need to focus on specific uh, um, um, health priorities for our, our purpose, uh, a general um, um, uh, range of uh, other needs that are uh, more stringent. So um, moving further, uh, in the first weeks to understand what kind of challenges uh, people may see uh, when they arrive to the host countries, we developed a, and conducted a, a rapid survey. And thank you all for your time and responses uh, to identify the most pressing needs and allow to focus on this. And uh, uh, the overall um, conclusion was that services were covered. Um, the EU has uh, activated the temporary protection. Uh, many countries have uh, passed special regulations to ensure the same access to same services as for local populations. Uh, while some countries flag that uh, to address uh, to access some of these services, uh, people would need to register as asylum seekers, and it has changed over time. In, in time, also further differences were uh, observed. Uh, not all host countries have made the transition to people-centered models of care or supportive services or video-supported treatment and outpatient models of care not necessarily uh, universally available across the EU countries. And through the patient networks, uh, this information has, uh, has been also uh, um, coming back to the NTP of Ukraine, who uh, has been uh, flagging these um, areas of additional uh, need uh, in, the, in some of the regular meetings. Uh, uh, however, a universal issue uh, across the countries in the EU uh, is access to the TB medicines, and uh, particularly for MDR-TB medications of oral MDR-TB medicines and pediatric formulations. And uh, this has become one of the key focuses. So if we look at the, um, uh, the, the availability, um, uh, most of the countries reported that they would have a uh, good for first-line medicines and uh, um, uh, fully available without any restriction. For pediatric formulations, you see more than half would have challenges to, uh, they don't have them available in the country and would have challenges accessing them. Next. Uh, for uh, MDR-TB drugs, uh, bedaculin seem to be the most uh, uh, restricted in access, and the other ones, linezolid, levofloxacin, and moxifloxacin, are widely available. And from group B, next one, uh, the uh, clofazamine, ciclosarin, and the lamanin are the ones who are, would be in a, a difficult uh, situation to obtain fast. Uh, and uh, uh, because and these are uh, because of obviously a low burden of uh, MDRTB across uh, the European uh, EU countries, but also some um, uh, registration and uh, affordability um, uh, challenges that have been highlighted by, by the respondents. 
So moving uh, next one. Um, so in terms of uh, other areas where um, um, the uh, uh, TB, uh, the WHO regional office for Europe has um, uh, focused on was to uh, provide rapid communication and guidance uh, to countries in how to address specific questions that were coming. Uh, one was a joint uh, ECDC WHO information note on testing for TB infection and screening among refugees arriving in the European countries from Ukraine. Uh, then at the global level, an interagency field guide uh, has uh, been uh, issued uh, in, um, uh, uh, at the beginning of March uh, that uh, focuses uh, uh, on uh, TB prevention, care among refugees and other populations in humanitarian settings. And it has already been adapted uh, to the use in Ukraine. It focuses primarily on managerial and organizational aspects of TB intervention in such situations. And so it comes very type, uh, timely. And uh, uh, there's also an information note ensuring, on ensuring continuity of essential health and TB services for people living with TB and refugees affected by humanitarian crisis that developed uh, uh, by headquarters colleagues and in process to be uh, released. For coordination and professional communication, the focus has been on uh, information updates and convening role, and we have used all our platforms to engage providers and civil society uh, through the GLC, through the virtual medical consilium, through the uh, regional coordination committee to help support connecting the dots and share, sharing the latest updates. And uh, you'll hear more uh, about some of these uh, in, in other updates uh, from um, uh, our colleagues. Uh, there's also a uh, very close collaboration and work with partners, uh, particularly I will highlight the European Centre for Disease Control, Stop TB uh, Partnership, Global Fund, uh, uh, Médecins Sans Frontières and KNCV in, the, in the, some of the hosting uh, countries and other partners, uh, just to ensure that I haven't forget anyone, there are many more. Next one. Uh, so, in terms of uh, um, um, information management, as I mentioned, one of the key challenges that uh, has been flagged is that uh, when patients uh, arrive to uh, hosting countries, they don't know where to go for the, uh, to access the services. Uh, so, one of the efforts of the um, uh, um, GID team was to expand the use of um, of the test finder, which is a Europe, it's an initiative by a, a WHO collaborating center uh, to um, uh, expand uh, and has been uh, uh, mapping the services uh, for HIV uh, testing sites and viral hepatitis and STI to also expand it to HIV testing and treatment. So please, uh, if you go there and uh, you don't see your country uh, represented, uh, kindly uh, contact uh, Andre and uh, Georgi and Andre to to. Uh, update the, the map uh, with the contact information for uh, of your country. Now, the, the, the second one, uh, the second uh, focus uh, was to uh, ensure uh, the uh, on a case by case basis to facilitate linkages be between entity Ukraine and the focal points, and then decide how to engage uh, the providers. And uh, for that, indeed, the cross border mechanism that has been uh, pre existing and has been set up uh, has been very helpful. And um, uh, and uh, Andre is uh, the the one to to contact in case uh, you want to use the uh, the long track. Now the final one is on Poland. Uh, so some of the next one next yes. Uh, so uh, on in in Poland, as I mentioned, uh, one of the key um, uh, issue challenges has been the. Uh, access to medicines uh, for MDRTB, and uh, our team has worked together with the Stop TB uh, Partnership and GDF and MSF uh, to uh, ensure access to these uh, through uh, uh, with funding from from WHO uh, to ensure an emergency stock uh, in Poland, and uh, this is now in process to be provided. Uh, in the meantime, Médecins Sans Frontières is working to ensure access to immediate needs of medicines in, in the country. 
Uh, we've also just had a, a mission to Poland last week, and uh, uh, the, the focus was to strengthen cross-border collaboration and continuity of care and focus on how service, uh, services and service models in uh, Poland can adapt to, to uh, host uh, the number of uh, people with, uh, uh, that are in need of uh, treatment in uh, Poland. And uh, I think we've made uh, good progress on that. So uh, in closing, um, I just want to mention that I've been uh, humbled to witness an incredible mobilization on health and civil society. Leaders. And especially after already, yes, the last one, already two years of COVID that disrupted the world, as we knew, particularly was tough on the uh, frontliners. So I'd like to acknowledge the calm support and solidarity across Europe and unexpected and unexpected setting, uh, settings. And uh, health workers are the ones to represent hope in the in the, in the, the years to come, and the, in the ways we change and uh, make our services more responsive and agile. Because it is only us here and now that can make that response and changes happen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stella, um, for uh, this wonderful update on the work that is being done on this uh, really uh, important uh, topic. And I would like also to mention on top of that, that either today or tomorrow, the WHO uh, Global Tuberculosis Program will release an information note on ensuring continuity of essential tuberculosis services for people with TB and drug resistant TB in refugees affected uh, by war in Ukraine. So this document will be available on the WHO Global Tuberculosis website, and it has been developed in participation and collaboration with us in the WHO European region. So it basically will provide also a summary and update of what key tools are available to health authorities, partners, civil society, and other stakeholders. With no further ado, I will, would like to ask and call uh, Dr. Sayanova to update on the uh, our efforts and work on uh, empowering and uh, the meaningful engagement of civil society and affected communities in tuberculosis response. So the floor is yours and please bear in mind you have 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Oscar. Uh, good afternoon, uh, good morning, good evening, dear colleagues. Uh, as you know, uh, the, the role of civil society is very important in TB response and uh, they are our equal partners. And here in uh, the WHO um, uh, office, uh, in the European uh, Regional Office, we are working very closely with the civil society. And uh, I would uh, uh, like briefly um, update you on the, our uh, partnership and the collaboration with the civil society in our region um, for their uh, meaningful engagement uh, in the uh, response in the region and to get the global and the uh, regional uh, commitments and targets. If you uh, allow, I will, uh, I cannot switch to the um, uh, presentation mode because uh, I don't know why it doesn't uh, change my presentation, but I, I hope that you can see it very well. Um, one of the, um, one of the uh, tools, like say platform for the engagement with civil society in our region is a regional collaborating committee. And uh, Stella already mentioned about this committee in her presentation. This committee is on accelerated response to three diseases, tuberculosis, HIV, and viral hepatitis. And this is the European uh, platform for a regular uh, knowledge and experience exchange, exchange and the partnership. Um, uh, and it aimed to get the uh, target three of sustainable development goal to uh, a strengthen um, a partnership and the two um, joint efforts. And the um, composition of this uh, uh, regional committee is um, uh, civil society and communities, representative of uh, technical and funding uh, agencies, UN organization and the medical professional. We are hosting this uh, uh, collaborating committee. We are the secretariat and we have a chair and vice chair who is uh, re-elected every three years. And we have a fourth group and the uh, uh, regular uh, members. And uh, here you can see the uh, link to the web page where you can have all information. So together with the regional collaborating committee, uh, in order to increase the voice of civil society in the affected community, we developed the terms of reference and uh, we established the uh, WHO Europe roster uh, of civil society in the affected community experts who are 
who will be engaged in the uh, conducting the uh, national to be um, program reviews and uh, also um, other uh, activities related to engagement of civil society and affected community in to be response in our region. So uh, another uh, work um, of uh, regional collaborating committee is related to um, engagement and involvement of regional collaborating committee and uh, in uh, development of uh, political and strategic documents in the region. And uh, recently we had an open consultation to discuss the uh, new uh, regional action plans for diseases, TB, HIV, viral hepatitis, and uh, sexual transmitted. Uh, infections it was in February 2022, and uh, during the meeting, uh, members of the uh, committee they prioritized actions of the civil society and community organization to promote people-centered care, to enhance partnership, and to stronger engagement of all sectors uh, to address social determinants of health in line with the strategic priorities of these action plans. Um, um, regional collaborating committee is also um, uh, having the ad hoc calls to address, uh, to discuss, and to develop the action points on the uh, urgent issues and the uh, important topics. And recently, we have a virtual ad hoc meeting of the committee to discuss the situation in um, uh, and um, the outcome of this uh, call of this meeting was call to action to national governments, development partners, agencies, and civil society on ensuring access to services and on uh, ensuring continuity of services for refugees arriving from Ukraine in the context of humanitarian crisis. And also, um, Stella mentioned about this call to action in her presentation. So uh, another um, a means of communication and the partnership with the civil society is a direct partnership with the civil society and uh, here in this slide, you can see the uh, products and outcomes of this uh, uh, partnership, uh, in the recent ones, let's say. So uh, together with the uh, TB Europe Coalition, uh, we are working on operationalization and implementation of multi-sectoral accountability framework on tuberculosis. And in my next uh, slide, I will give more detailed information. And uh, with the uh, TBEC in particular, we are working on adaptation and implementation of Annex 2 on meaningful engagement of civil society and to be affected communities in multi-sectoral response and in adaptation and implementation of the sectoral accountability framework at national level. So together with the uh, Global TB Caucus, we are working on uh, engagement and involvement of uh, member of parliaments at country level in the multi-sectoral response and also in uh, adaptation and implementation of multi-sectoral accountability framework in our region. And we're also aligning our work with the civil society task force, which is hosted by the WHO, a global TV program. So um, civil society organization in our region are involved in the decision-making and policy setting of the region. They are members of WHO regional technical advisory group, TAC-TB. It's uh, the um, uh, advisory group, which is independent uh, group of experts providing review and technical advice on tuberculosis to the WHO regional director. Also, um, um, civil society and TB affected communities are the members of national TB reviews and they are engaged in all stages of preparation, conducting, and uh, reporting the national TB program reviews at country level. So also, um, uh, civil society are engaged and involved in consultations of WHO Europe strategic documents and this one was as I mentioned, the consultation of uh, uh, new uh, regional action plans, and also they made a big input in development of monitoring framework for TB action plan, uh, for the, uh, our new uh, TB action plan. And the uh, civil society organization also involved in the in engage in setting and implementation of the research agenda in our region and the recent example was uh, their um, uh, active involvement in assessment of the situation with the psychosocial support for people with the TB, HIV, and viral hepatitis in the region. So they were uh, involved in the uh, starting with the uh, development of protocols, data collection, data analysis, and consolidation of the report. 
So here you can see the four um, uh, monitoring uh, uh, indicators to measure meaningful civil society engagement and TB response. And I can say that uh, these uh, four indicators was uh, developed in close collaboration and input uh, from civil society and TB affected community. Louder, louder, say hot. Yes, uh, thank you. So along with the uh, engagement of civil society uh, and the affected communities and to be response in our region, we also contributing to their uh, capacity development. So we are doing do this uh, through uh, participation in their um, uh, webinars, uh, workshops and the meetings. And also we are providing our input and technical support in a strategic documents and reports, which is developed by civil society. And here you can see three recent documents, which we made our input. It is the uh, assessment of human rights, gender, stigma, and discrimination barriers to TB services uh, developed by Pass Center. This is a standardized uh, package of supportive community-based services to uh, improve TB outcomes developed by uh, TB Europe Coalition. And this is a technical guide on the psychosocial counseling and treatment at having support for uh, um, people affected by tuberculosis, which was uh, developed by uh, TB Allied. So um, that was my uh, last um, slide. And uh, uh, thank you for your attention. But I want to say that despite of all these achievements, we still need to uh, increase and uh, uh, strengthen our partnership with civil society, especially at country levels. So uh, thank you for your attention, and I'd be glad to, um, to answer to your questions. Thank you very much, uh, dear colleagues. Again, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat window. Uh, we are now um, uh, would like to proceed with the next with a break uh, and to reconvene in five minutes, not in ten. But before that, I would kindly ask everyone to turn off their cameras to take a group photo, if that is possible. Uh, would you please turn on your cameras? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thank you once again. I will do another photo. And you are also welcome to pick up photos, screenshots, and upload it, send it to me or or upload it on the repository straight away. I will do another photo now. Please bear with me. And now you can even see that those screenshots and photos are available on the repository. And I will take another screenshot now. Uh, one, two, three, smile, say NTB. NTB. Thank you very much indeed. We see you uh, in about five minutes. Please be back in time. We're looking forward to continue over. Dear colleagues, um, I would like uh, to proceed with the next agenda item. I will be presenting and providing an update on progress uh, on the development of the tuberculosis action plan for the WHO European region. And as being said by our divisional director, Dr. Dino Binzuli, during the welcoming remarks, this meeting is special since we will be updating on this progress. And this document is the major one. Uh, yeah. Next slide, please. So, as you may perfectly recall, um, uh, due to the new operational environment, including the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the tuberculosis response and rapidly changing technical approaches to reduce the burden of tuberculosis in the region, uh, back in May 2021, uh, the Technical Advisory Group on Tuberculosis for the WHO European Region, or TAC-TB, recommended the development of the Tuberculosis uh, Action Plan for the region for the years that are covering post unitarian period 2023 and 2030. So this document uh, would support member states with the implementation of national responses to tuberculosis epidemic, covering the, uh, this post initial period of eight, eight years and reaching the targets of the global NTTB strategy. Next slide. Uh, the new tuberculosis action plan is built uh, on progress achieved during the 2016 and 2020 
when the previous uh, regional action plan was valid and final report describing that progress and joint achievements is also available and uh, was developed and available uh, on the WHO Euro website. The development of the new action plan is timely since it will be submitted for an endorsement uh, the Regional Committee for Europe at a time when we are facing specific challenges to the tuberculosis response, including the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, across the region, as well as highly potential impact of the escalating humanitarian crisis in Europe that was triggered by the war in Ukraine. And all of these factors together with the availability of new options for tuberculosis prevention, screening, diagnosis, treatment and care, and service delivery, uh, call for a renewed commitment to an agile and fit for purpose response on tuberculosis in the region. And to reinforce region specific efforts in reaching the global NTB strategy targets by 2030, the new regional action plan outlines priorities to the member states, uh, WHO and partners in the region and it reflects the urgency to get back on track. Next slide, please. Um, uh, the process of development of tuberculosis action plan has been very transparent and had started almost a year ago. Uh, throughout the first months of uh, the year of this year, 2022, the draft of the document had passed through series of uh, open consultations and has been presented to the technical partners, civil society organizations, affected communities and member states. Uh, with advanced version that has been built and developed based on the feedback and comments, and each of which had been addressed and changes introduced. And we are now, as you can see, uh, highlighted in green, uh, in the month of May 2022, almost four months before the 72nd session of the Regional Committee for Europe, to which this document will be presented for endorsement. And you're aware uh, of the structure of the tuberculosis action plan that is fully aligned with the NTB strategy and its three pillars ascribes itself to the same vision as it aligns with the same goals, but outlines the, outlines the framework for implementation tailored to the regional context. Next slide. The vision of the uh, regional action plan uh, is a region free of tuberculosis burden by the year 2030. And the goal is to end the spread of drug susceptible and drug resistant tuberculosis by achieving universal access to prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and care in all member states of the region, thereby contributing to the MTB strategy goal of ending the TB epidemic. Um, a universal access means evidence-based practices and quality services that are available, accessible, affordable, and acceptable to all people, irrespective of their age, gender, sexual orientation, religion, origin, nationality, socioeconomic status, and geographical background. Next slide, please. And one more time, allow me to remind on ambitious target set up by the new tuberculosis action plan. It is expected that the member states will develop or update their national strategic plans in alignment with the new targets and milestones. Dear colleagues, we have been informed that you hear an echo. Could you confirm that the voice is going well now? Alex? Thank you, Andre. Yes, now it's going well. Thank you. WHO uh, will report on progress made in implementing the Regional Action Plan to the WHO Regional Committee in 2026 and in an interim report showing the progress made at the challenges identified up to 2025. In uh, 2031, at the very end, the final report of the tuberculosis action plan, similar to the previous action plan final report, detailing the overall progress in the region by 2030, will be submitted to that, uh, that year regional committee and also presented to you, dear member states. Next slide, please. So this slide describes the process of the uh, open consultation meetings. Again, the process has been very transparent. Uh, the draft version has been presented on the 24th of January to the, uh, for the technical consultation meeting to the technical partners, civil society organizations, donor organizations, and affected communities. And the feedback had been collected. In the middle of February, uh, they, we had a meeting uh, of the regional committee, uh, a collaborating committee on accelerated response to tuberculosis, HIV, and viral hepatitis. 
uh, with participation, uh, broad participation of civil society and affected communities. And the action plan has been presented to them. Uh, the, uh, also in the middle of February, we hosted the consultation virtual meeting to the member states in which the action plan has been presented. And uh, we, the feedback has been collected, next slide, uh, in, uh, by completing the special feedback form. We have been given the two weeks uh, to provide the feedback, but again, the, this, two, this period has been extended. So in March, April, once the feedback had been collected, it was addressed properly in a consolidated format. In parallel, we uh, developed a summary of the tuberculosis action plan or the working documents that will be submitted in June next month to the standing committee of the regional committee. And uh, this working document is a summary of the bigger background documents of the regional action plan, highlighting all the achievements and uh, all, the, uh, all, all the next steps. Next slide, please. So uh, this is the basically summary of the comments that have been provided. And we structured the, 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 the comments by pillars uh, of the uh, regional action plan and key areas uh, of, of the document. So most of the comments uh, from the technical uh, partner consultation meeting and uh, with the member and with civil society organizations uh, had been uh, came for the pillar one integrated people centered care and prevention. So specifically for the key areas as people at the center, tuberculosis diagnosis, tuberculosis preventive treatment and systematic screening for TB treatment and care for tuberculosis and drug resistant TB, as well as for pillar two, bold policies and supportive systems. Next slide, please. So 58 comments in total had been provided after the consul open consultation meeting with the member states and then we structured them the same. So most of the comments were provided for the following sessions, uh, mostly to the pillar one on integrated people-centered care and prevention, people at the center, tuberculosis diagnosis, TB preventive treatment and, and screening, treatment and care for TB. However, several member states provided comments to introduction and outline of the tuberculosis action plan. And this uh, part has been uh, really, uh, which required us to make necessary amendments. Next slide. So these are the examples of issues that were raised during the technical partner consultation meetings. So they were related to the decentralization versus centralized model of care. So the concerns uh, expressed of the level of knowledge and experience at the primary health care level. So the investments in building human resources capacities are essential. So more attention needed to the legal rights and gender related barriers, stigma and discrimination. This is very much important. And the exact comment was that the needs for social and humanitarian protection during tuberculosis treatment, especially for the RTD, uh, should be highlighted. So across uh, all technical areas and the key, uh, specifically for the first uh, pillar, the uh, comments were came for the to um, highlight the meaningful, uh, more meaningful engagement of civil society and affected communities. So, uh, and this, this has been properly addressed. Another uh, important area that uh, required attention uh, was specific requests from the sub-regions, the West and the East, knowing that in the low incidence countries, we are facing many expertise in many years now, and this is very much important and relevant these days. So comments that were related to the uh, push of more ambitions uh, and targets and, and advanced in milestones. So the comments were that the target date of the 2027 for transitioning from massive screening seems to be delayed. And uh, it was recommended to consider early timeline as 2025 seems very late. So, but nevertheless, everything has been considered and properly addressed in the text uh, to which has been shared with, with you before. Also, ser um, uh, series of uh, member states uh, had requested to include, the, uh, to include the new emergencies that were considered respectively, and that is why uh, we have added uh, a necessary text uh, that is highlighting uh, the current humanitarian crisis that was triggered by the war in Ukraine, and it affects in the region. Next slide. So these are the quotes by, by, by the member states that were received as a feedback form. Generally, uh, the uh, member states had provided support and welcomed uh, the development of the new uh, documents. And basically, I would like to read the last quote that the, the action plan supports the goal to capitalize on the synergies 
generated by addressing the overlapping burden of TB, HIV, and viral hepatitis in the region. Next slide. So uh, along with the, uh, uh, of the advanced version of the action plan, uh, we uh, shared for your attention the updated monitoring and evaluation framework with a set of indicators, uh, region specific uh, for 2023 and 2030. So uh, the, the original monitoring and evaluation framework has been developed in 2019. It went through the consultation process, but uh, based on the feedback received from the open consultation meetings, the necessary alignment has been done to this uh, to this uh, to support this action plan. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. So these are the uh, changes that have been made. They were related to the terminology and definition of indicators. These were updated. LTBI treatment to, to, was changed to tuberculosis preventive treatment. XDR was changed to pre-XDR TB. So additional indicators were introduced. Uh, first is the coverage with fluoroquinolone susceptibility testing among MDRR patients. Screening for tuberculosis for mental and substance use disorders and proportion of individuals who receive tuberculosis treatment and care during uh, using the digital adherence technologies. So these indicators are very much important and we will be working together with partners on supporting on how to better report uh, on, on these indicators. Also, uh, the baseline values were updated with the latest available data. Next slide. So this slide presents uh, the changes that were highlighted in red in the Excel file that you have in the, in the folder with the background documents. And as you can see uh, that the, um, uh, the changes are quite visible and um, uh, I mean, um, easy to understand. Next slide. And as a next step, I would like to say is that this is the process today in May, uh, we have uh, presented to you the advanced version, version 5.1, together with the uh, monitoring and evaluation framework. In June, uh, the summary of the tuberculosis action plan or the working documents will be submitted to the standing committee of the regional committee for Europe for the feedback. So also in June, we will be drafting the decision uh, for the endorsement of the regional action plan and uh, develop the final version of the document that we'll be sharing uh, with you by, uh, um, by email. During the August, September, we're kindly asking the you, the National Tuberculosis Programs and the National TB Focal Points to brief your ministries of health uh, on the development uh, of the document that will be presented to the regional committee and that it will be submitted to the endorsement. In September, uh, specifically on the 13th of September, the submission to the 72nd session of the Regional Committee for Europe uh, will uh, review this document and uh, endorse, as we hope. And also in September, uh, following that, the interrogating on setting the court towards ending tuberculosis HIV and hepatitis uh, and what is needed for the WHO European region to reach the SDG 2030 goals. So during this uh, ministerial breakfast at the regional committee uh, meeting, uh, at the regional committee we will be uh, discussing more in detail the action plan has been have been developed by the WHO European region on tuberculosis and currently on HIV, viral hepatitis, and STIs. And in November we will be hosting a regional meeting to to operationalize the tuberculosis action plan the next year after it will be endorsed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Oscar. We will move on through the agenda and we'll kindly ask Juan to start sharing his screen and present the set of slides related to the uh, modeling of TB epidemic in the region aligned to the interventions defined in the new action plan. Meanwhile, dear colleagues, participants, feel, please feel free to consider that you could ask your questions through the chat or later on during the uh, Q&A session. Back to you, Juan. Great. Thank you very much, Oscar and Andre. Uh, and thank you all. Um, so yes, the idea is, I'm going to be brief, but the idea is to present, um, present to you um, the projections uh, that we have been working on with WHO Euro Office on, um, on the current status and also the projections of the of the TB of the TB program uh, looking into the future for the regional at the regional level, yeah. the idea is uh, of these projections is to well first to contribute 
uh, well, uh, the projections, of course, to, to track the progress um, in our common goal of reaching NTB uh, strategy targets for the region. Uh, and importantly, to establish uh, a counterfactual trajectory. That means a baseline uh, against which we can compare our progress in the future. Um, as you can imagine, well, modeling, um, modeling this type of, of work requires constant updating and, uh, and being informed all the time. But it's important to be, I mean, the ongoing effort of constructing baselines against we can compare uh, to track our progress in the future. Uh, and modeling is the best uh, is the best tool for this. Um, and of course, we'll project potential scenarios of impact in different for different interventions um, and their specific contribution um, uh, towards NTB strategy targets. So very briefly uh, about the methods and how we do this. Um, uh, we take an approach to modeling interventions that has been used before. We have published this work before uh, in terms of the approach, but we are designing and calibrating new models for the WHO uh, uh, Euro region. Um, and basically the approach, the, the approach takes the whole history of disease uh, from the very beginning of start of an incident TV case to the VIP, to what we see as the as the downstream uh, of the TV of the cascade of care for tuberculosis. Um, and along this cascade, uh, we know that there are gaps and delays that we can either shorten if there are if it's a delay or or fix a leak if there is a gap. Uh, so take the example of um, uh, for example uh, presentation to care. Uh, there is a delay that is not necessarily known in most settings, but there are estimations of it, of how long it takes for a, for a symptomatic person uh, living with active TB uh, to present for care. Um, and that delay can be uh, shortened in, with many interventions that we know exist and, or tools that we have uh, looking for prevalent cases in the community, um, reducing uh, barriers for access to care and so on. Uh, and in the same, in the same way, this works along the cascade uh, until we get to the to our final aim, which is uh, well curing the, the curative uh, success of treatment of tuberculosis. So this is, I mean, briefly and in and, and very broadly, what we do in terms of modeling. But then we take real data from the region um, and calibrate models to be able to to reflect what's happening in the past, so we can actually project to the future. Um, now, what are the packages of interventions that we are interested uh, on? So we, we introduce uh, these interventions in the model in a sequential way. And, that, uh, and the, the purpose of that is to um, give priority to the, to the uh, downstream side of the TV cascade of care, assuming that these are tools that are already in our hands and that should be optimized before moving upstream into the more um, well, not only more costly, but also less available uh, forms of, of tackling the, the, the burden of TB. So we're talking about uh, introducing new tools for adherence, uh, introducing um, new TB treatment um, uh, into people that have been diagnosed or reducing that delay. Uh, also increase, in, in, increase the fraction of second line using fluoroquinolones, for example. And this is this is actually something that is very timely and makes these projections uh, even uh, more relevant now because as you know well the guidelines have been just updated recently um, so we're talking about all or our shortened regimens uh, that are already in guidelines and this is something that we are modeling at the moment uh, in terms of, of diagnosis uh, we are thinking about interventions in the future that can increase the proportion of tv diagnosis that undergo drug sensitivity testing uh, and also increase the proportion of diagnosis attempts attempts that are um, performed using rapid testing. Um, uh, then we move upstream to think about uh, precursor seeking, so reduce barriers of access, uh, reduce prevalence of undetected TB, and finally, when you think about TB prevention, um, in a way to increase the number of household contacts uh, or bacteriologically confirmed cases 
on, on TP, uh, TB preventive therapy. Um, so we, we model these interventions one by one and we, we try to visually uh, see um, how, how, how closer we get to the, to the NTB targets. Um, I'm going to, um, yeah, I'm going to move to the projections now. So what you're looking at here is um, in the, in the uh, shaded area, you have the uncertainty around a baseline estimation of the trend of TB incidence per 100 people, uh, per 100,000 people in the region. Um, and that trend, you can see that it has a, a decline that it is of around four or five percent. And that decline, even if it is not uh, drastic, the change here uh, is definitely um, altered by the disruptions caused by COVID-19. So we introduced in our modeling um, the disruption caused by COVID-19 according to estimations made in the region of uh, what was the eruptions in terms of diagnosis and treatment. Uh, and you can see that this decline um, is not longer following that line uh, and that trend and is slightly going up again. Uh, now, from that point, um, we introduce uh, the interventions that we I just mentioned in the plan and that you will see in the report uh, and also the, all the details of the modeling you will find in the report. Um, and as you can see, we do this sequentially uh, and we mark the WHO elimination target um, with this uh, dashed line. And we see how, how uh, fast we can get there with all these interventions. And it is clear, at least from this estimation, of course, there's a band of uncertainty there uh, that it will require the whole package and it will require huge efforts in introducing, uh, getting as far as introducing, um, optimizing TB preventive therapy to actually reach elimination targets by 2035. So it is it's, it's not an easy task. Of course, as I said, there's uncertainty, uh, but there are other factors that we should consider um, like, for example, the fact that uh, we can introduce uh, what we call, in this case, silver bullets, uh, because they are not just not available at the moment. But what would happen if by 2027, um, there is a vaccination strategy that we can roll out uh, in the region um, at, at high levels of uptake. Um, and that will definitely uh, make this process faster to reach the WHO elimination target. Um, this is, as I said before, this is a, a, a projection for the for the average mean scenario of the WHO European region. We know that there might be uh, differential uh, levels of effect according to high prevalence and low prevalence settings, and that's something that we are working on as well. So, and this is when we look at the same picture, but in terms of, of mortality. Um, but then we don't define uh, thresholds uh, for mortality. Now, um, so basically the, the message that we, we want to take is that um, reaching those elimination targets is, is feasible, but it's a, it takes a lot of effort. Some of these interventions are already in place and being uh, supported by the updated guidelines of WHO um, that uh, future uh, silver bullets uh, uh, for example, like vaccination, effective vaccination will come into place, will definitely improve this, uh, this, the outlook of this process. Now, what, what are the next steps? Well, establish priority scenarios for analysis. So as I said, thinking about low and high burden, uh, assess the required efforts. If we are talking about uh, uh, cost effectiveness analysis. Of what is the actual economic effort that needs to be made to reach these targets. And uh, yeah, as I said, articulate this with health economics. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you very much. You, you will find details of the modeling uh, and more projections in the report. Thank you very much, Juan. And again, uh, for everyone's attention, the advanced version of the TB action plan includes the parts and section on the uh, epidemiological modeling that has been just presented by uh, Juan Vesga. So uh, the next agenda item is will be presented by Dr. Fuad Mirzaev, the lead on treatment group, the uh, Global Tuberculosis Program, WHO headquarters, to provide an update on development of the new guidelines on treatment of drug susceptible and drug resistant tuberculosis. This is the area that is very important and key for the WHO European region. Thank you. Hi everyone, hi Scar. 
if you can just guide me if uh, you see the screen. Yes, we do see the screen. Please uh, make the presentation more, please. Is it now? Perfect. Okay, great. Thank you very much. And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this um, meeting. So what I'm going to talk, talk today, it's um, about the updates uh, in the area of the TB treatment, both policy and um, some operational guidance from WHO. And uh, uh, before I do, um, let me just uh, put this slide for, for the quick uh, minute, uh, just showing the, um, the pathway and um, all the guidelines and handbooks and other derivative documents on TB treatment that we have produced in um, WHO from 1997 onwards and highlight uh, that uh, um, in uh, th this year, in 2022, we'll be having quite a number of um, the guidelines and uh, the, the operational handbooks coming out, both on the side of drug susceptible TB treatment and drug resistant TB treatment. So what, what are those exactly? Um, the um, uh, the drug susceptible TB treatment guidelines uh, and recommendations were a little bit uh, split uh, in 2010 and 2017 guidelines from WHO. So this um, um, uh, new guideline document that is coming out uh, basically probably next week is the first attempt of the global tuberculosis program to consolidate all the recommendations that we had uh, uh, in, in those um, guideline documents into one document, um, taking out some of those that are not relevant anymore, um, consolidating those are still valid, mainly on the treatment of drug susceptible TB using six month regimen, but also adding two new um, recommendations on the new regimens, four-month regimens for adults and children. And uh, one of those regimens you already have seen in the pediatric TB guidelines, the, um, the regimen that is using the same medicines but is four-month uh, based on the evidence from the SHINE TB uh, trial, from the SHINE trial. And uh, the, the other one that we have announced already in the rapid communication last year, um, the HPMZ regimen, uh, also four month regimen that has moxifloxacin and rifapentine uh, with, within. It will also retain uh, the chapters on drug susceptible TB treatment and uh, antiretroviral treatment in people living with HIV and use of corticosteroids in treatment of uh, TB meningitis and pericarditis. Um, of course, this um, in the same uh, fashion as we try uh, to release all the guidelines, we will also release uh, an operational handbook. This operational handbook on drug susceptible TB treatment will be actually the first uh, ever released uh, by WHO and kind of as other handbooks uh, is an attempt to clarify the recommendations and make them um, uh, add some implementation advice to the clinicians and national TB programs. It will also include, and I just wanted to highlight that, two annexes uh, that are the result of an important and quite uh, uh, significant two systematic reviews uh, and meta-analyses uh, that were done uh, by um, uh, in children uh, for children group and for adults uh, by one by the University of California San Francisco uh, University University of California San Francisco and University of Liverpool. So these systematic reviews and um, um, again will be um, part uh, the the web annexes to the handbook. Um, just to anticipate that a little bit, uh, um, you might have been aware of some discussions about the dosing of the first line medicines in the current regimen. So we did that systematic reviews just to establish the certain baseline before we have data from uh, the ongoing clinical trials on, for example, on the higher doses of rifampicin. But these systematic reviews confirm that 
um, the, the, uh, the dosing of the first line medicines, uh, not only rifampicin, but uh, other three are currently uh, supported by the available evidence and uh, do not need to be modified at the moment, unless the new evidence is available. So now coming back to uh, the drug resistant TB uh, guidelines, um, um, you probably know that we had, um, uh, I mean, the latest document was released in, um, in, in during the summer of 2020, uh, two years ago. And uh, in February, March th this year, we had another guideline development group meeting, uh, the meeting of experts that discussed some new evidence. And we announced in rapid communication, I'll go a little bit in, in details on the next slide, uh, of the upcoming changes. So this new document that we expecting to release towards end of this year, will have um, two uh, updated chapters, one on uh, BPAL-M, or BPAL regimens for treatment of multidrug resistant TB or rifampicin resistant TB. It will update the chapter on the nine month regimens. I'll explain why it will retain uh, the chapter on the longer regimens and all the rest that was in, uh, in the consolidated um, drug resistant TB guidelines before. It will come out again, will be released together with the um, handbook. Uh, that now exists, but will have to be updated because of these changes. So a bit more in detail that probably the national TB programs might be interested, what we released in the rapid communication in um, earlier um, um, this month is that uh, the six month BPAL-M regimen, so the regimen with bedaquiline, pretomyelin, linezolid, and moxifloxacin, uh, will be recommended to be used programmatically and uh, just to, to, to highlight programmatically versus operational research as it was uh, uh, the BPAL predecessor was recommended, will be recommended to use programmatically and will be um, a kind of the first preference regimen over the nine month or the longer regimens. In case of uh, the resistance to quinolones, the moxifloxacin part of this regimen can be dropped and it can be continued as a BPAL with three medicines since the evidence was showing high efficacy of that regimen uh, as well. Um, the nine month uh, regimen, that was one regimen uh, currently recommended, will, um, this part of the chapter will add another regimen that has the same duration um, same uh, content uh, and composition, except of one modification. Instead of four month etionamide, it can include two months of linezolid at the 600 milligram daily dose. So this regimen becomes more flexible. It actually two regimens and presents the certain advantages. Just to remind, and what we also said in the rapid communication, that uh, there will be patients that may not be eligible for the six month or nine month regimens, uh, like patients with XDRTB, for example, or um, uh, those who failed one of those regimens and had the exposure to the, of the, to the component drugs. That means that the longer individualized, the only individualized possibility for designing the regimen, the longer regimen will remain and it's uh, uh, remain as a kind of last resort uh, in, for the possible treatment of, um, of drug resistant TB. Another um, um, kind of duo of the documents, the guidelines and the operational handbook, um, so-called on tuberculosis care and support will also be released um, um, before the summer or probably like early during the summer in June. Uh, and uh, this will be the, the existing recommendations that we had previously included within the drug resistant TB guideline book or the drug susceptible TB guideline uh, document, but we are taking this out and uh, adding a handbook that we never had before that kind of a little bit goes into a uh, deep dive into how to implement those recommendations. 
Well, uh, I mean, uh, this, this is uh, the these are the updates, but uh, it's uh, I just wanted to add a couple of additional slides um, uh, in, in, during uh, this presentation, just to remind everyone and provide a little bit of outlook that you have probably already seen in the last year global tuberculosis re re report uh, into the trials or new evidence that we may be. Uh, getting uh, uh, in in the near future. So the if we just put together the um, some uh, research that uh, the clinical trials or clinical research that we're expecting um, in 21 22, uh, those red ones uh, are actually the trials that already provided the data and helped uh, WHO to update. Um, uh, the drug resistant TB guidelines, but there are several others for which data is has been promised, we are, have not received that yet, but will be coming towards WHO, which may uh, provide the basis for additional updates in the short term. So uh, I just want to be sure that everyone is aware of that since the, the um, luckily, I think the, the field of uh, TB treatment becoming quite dynamic and uh, changing, improving, um, uh, as well with the operational research. And uh, it is important to, to note uh, some landscape of operational re research or modified shorter treatment regimens using the, um, the standardized protocol that uh, we in WHO headquarters together with TDR have developed and made available a couple of years ago. The research on BPAL for pre-XDRTB that is supported by KNCB and TBR Alliance, very much needed still, uh, despite of the recommendations that are coming out, both to support recommendations and also help countries that already started that operation and research to switch into the programmatic implementation, very much uh, uh, awaited and we are looking forward for the results of the modified shorter regimen for MDRTB, the operation research initiative by uh, European regional office and um, I think more than 10 countries in, 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 in your region, but also the BTB prospective cohort study that you see um, also I noted uh, a, a different combination of uh, the new medicines or repurposed medicines in, in, in this operation research. Another uh, important um, uh, point that I would like to mention, I'm sure the, the, you will have something in the agenda either today, uh, today, later today, about at least one of these uh, new global uh, public-private initiative for research, Unite for TB, but also there is another one that is called PAN-TB. It's um, uh, the, uh, the two major um, multi-million, multi-tens of million uh, initiative between uh, the uh, either European region, um, uh, Union or Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and, uh, uh, and uh, many um, uh, manufacturers of the medicines. And they are bringing a new concepts for phase one, phase two trials that will develop the either regimens or new medicines that will be ready for phase three research. So that means the, uh, the outlook for the longer term, like six, five, six years and later for new things in TB treatment is will be very much rich and, and, and coming our way. So let's think about that. In summary, uh, we have, uh, as I shown earlier, several new treatment guidelines and handbooks to be released this year, um, quite a number. Um, we have uh, new uh, and shorter regimens that will be recommended um, uh, programmatically for both drug susceptible and drug resistant TB. I think it's important, it's impossible not to mention that for the first time, we'll have the, uh, uh, the duration of treatment of susceptible and drug resistant TB basically the same and as short as six months. And also I think an important point that I want to again reiterate, uh, that's the future perspective on further treatment shortening, new medicines and modifications, making these regimens shorter, better, more effective and uh, potentially uh, moving towards some stratified medicine also based on severity of TB disease is coming our way. So let's uh, make sure that we are prepared.
I'll stop here and happy to answer questions. Thank you very much for, uh, for providing these updates. Uh, I mean, in, in, indeed, they are very crucial and important for the many countries in the WHO European region. So, and we will be working together with countries how to better operationalize uh, the upcoming recommendations that will be released very much soon by the WHO. With no further ado, as we are a little bit behind the schedule, we will proceed with the next uh, agenda item is to update on the plans by the WHO uh, uh, Europe uh, for this 2022 on the main technical areas. And the first technical area is, uh, will be presented by Dr. Andrei Dadu on tuberculosis preventive treatment and systematic screenings. And uh, kindly asking dear colleagues to bear in time uh, for, the, uh, for the presentations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Oscar. Dear colleagues, I will take my, the liberty to update you quickly on your uh, targeted contributions to the sections related to the preventive treatment and systematic screening. And we'll share with you our plans on the next two years for implementing those operations within the framework of the new plan. Uh, so uh, these are a snapshots of the WHO and partners activities that has been committed to uh, in the action plan. I, I'm, I'm thanking all of the partners for joining and commenting the area of prevention and screening, and uh, we'll leave it to the member states later on to uh, read them uh, more in details. And here I will move on with the way uh, and the modality how this will be implemented. So we've discussed internally together with the partners and decided to move on with an operational framework, which includes four gears. Those are uh, the, uh, the, the elimination of the research gap uh, and operationalization of innovations. And that specifically relates to the implementation of the MDR preventive treatment under operational search conditions, which will update you later on. The second gear is a very much important tailored country support implementation, which includes the policy changes, service deliveries, monitoring and accountability at the country level. And the third one is, of course, the regional networking, which includes the communication, advocacy and capacity buildings for the countries to receive this tailored country support uh, technical assistance. And the fourth one, the most uh, relevant for the monitoring of the impact of those interventions is, of course, the list of the indicators which allows to be accountable for uh, the countries back and report on the uh, 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 commitments to the uh, high level agenda uh, events, including the uh, follow up on the new world declaration. So in order to provide the technical support, we've developed a setup which will, uh, that has been tested already in four countries and will be uh, rolled out across other countries. It has been presented to the TB10 technical uh, network, experts network, and it was accepted as one of the best practice in delivering technical support. The first group of the intervention that has been already delivered is, of course, the localization of the WHO guidelines into the national language, which has been done and at your disposal can be uh, accessed on the WHO repositories, websites, and library. The second one is the capacity building, and we thought to uh, set up a task force of the high experts, which will deliver targeted technical support to the countries. And this has been done and was presented to you later uh, earlier in the uh, relevant workshops on preventive screening and uh, uh, preventive treatment and systematic screening. So uh, those six members of the group has been uh, chopped in the tandems and uh, affiliated to the countries to deliver the technical support. And of course, we also are working with the collaborative centers that we had in the region to set up and launch a, a targeted to the technical area um, uh, workshop, a one week workshop, which will include both in tandem, the preventive treatment as well as the systematic screening. 
So moving on uh, and doing a bridge uh, between the capacity building uh, to the modus operandi uh, art, uh, and based on the country uh, technical delivery experience, we decided to put in the tandem two technical areas, the systematic screening and preventive treatment, and those to be reflected in the national guidelines uh, as they are, those interventions follow the patient pathways. So uh, the Holy Trinity has been decided to follow up with the data analysis, target group revisions, and the modeling and adaptation for diagnosis and treatment algorithms for the latent tuberculosis and of course the active disease. These three uh, stages has been dropped into the three milestones uh, process at the country level, which takes up to the two to four months to deliver the final output, which is the national guideline on preventive treatment and systematic screening. The process itself is a country driven one. So therefore the Ministry of Health is using the quartet composition to uh, set up the, uh, the, the country driven working group, which definitely is led by the uh, TB experts at the country level in diagnosis and treatment. The primary healthcare, which are the delivery task for workforce at the front lines, the experts on the at risk and affected populations, which are the HIV prisons and pediatrics, as well, the last but not least and very important, an engagement and delivery of the civil society and community-based organizations. And of course, these quartet, quartet to be um, uh, advised by the two experts from the WHO. On the right side of the slide, you see the progress. So that Kazakhstan has been already um, uh, endorsed with and provided with the new guideline. The experience gained in Kazakhstan has been presented to your consideration and used in Armenia, Georgia, and uh, Tajikistan currently. You see uh, later on the list, lower on the list, our plans to move on. And these plans are, are based on the country requests that has been collected during the April workshop 2021. Uh, the next one is basically um, the next one is basically the research and elimination and research gap. And as has been presented earlier, this relates to the uh, implementation of the MDR preventive treatment under the operational research conditions presented to you here. Uh, it has been done a lot, concept not developed, the partnership established and fund raised. And you see here at the bottom the plans which we will follow. That was my slide and I'm happy to pass the bus on to my uh, uh, colleague. Next one, which is... Sorry. Today, back to you. Yes. Thank you, Andre. Let me just share my screen with you. Okay. I hope. You're able to see my screen? Yes, we do so there. Please Thank you so much. on the presenter mode, please. Yes, yeah. it's taking a few seconds to go on presenter's mode. Yes. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, colleagues. Good evening. Um, I'm honored to present to you today on the um, diagnostics, laboratory diagnostics uh, area, and briefly also on um, IPC activities that we are planning for 2022. So as you know, um, um, we are, um, we have been um, so far and we will be further focusing on the major elements that will lead to well and safely functioning laboratories that provide quality assured and timely test results based on the latest WHO recommendations. These will include supporting member states in increased access and use of MWRDs as an initial diagnostic strategy for all people with presumed TB with use of microscopy as an initial diagnostic test to be discontinued. Furthermore, we will support laboratories uh, on their biosafety and well-functioning of safe equipment and safe laboratories in order to um, produce the best results. 
Uh, dear in addition, Shia, uh, apologies for interrupting, but I don't think you are sharing the right screen because we see still the uh, your background slide. You're seeing only my first slide so far? Yes, um, and it's not in the presenter mode. Would you please okay. go to presenter so mode? Strange. Mode? Okay, let me try to correct this. One second, please. Okay. Okay. Now you should be seeing the second slide. Is that correct? Can you confirm that as well? So there we see the second slide, but you can proceed the same way as uh, it's not in the presenter view, but that is fine. Thank you. Please proceed. Okay, this should be now in presenter's mode. And can you see the next bullet points on the slide? Uh, so there you can proceed uh, pre with presenting in the, uh, right now you're on slide two. Yes, and you can see the three bullet points, correct? Now four. We see four bullet points. Okay, thank you, Sayad. And now you see the, the, the slide after that. I just want to make sure that things are working well now. No, this is still the second uh, slide. Let us, uh, would mm -hmm. you please uh, turn okay. off the presentation okay. and it's we will not... present from our side? Okay, so there. So yes, please, there seems to be an the issue. Thank mm -hmm. you. Otherwise, Askar, if you can see this, uh, that's, that should work as well. If it's uh, big enough for colleagues to... That is okay. So there we are presenting from our end. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah, yes. go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, yes, as I was saying, um, the, the main, the first point I mentioned, the second on laboratory biosafety and well functioning of equipment, and um, furthermore, strengthening TB um, drug susceptibility testing and uh, quality assured TB drug susceptibility testing for all, um, um, uh, all medicines that are used for the treatment. And all of that is, of course, um, can only be um, uh, successful when we have trained human resources in all key aspects. Next slide, please. So um, on this slide, I'm just briefly showing you the uh, new um, guidelines that were published last year with the major difference of having now classes of uh, recommended diagnostic tests. Uh, we have now moderate complexity automated nucleic acid amplification tests for detection of TB and resistance to rifampicin and isoniazid as part of MWRDs, um, so WHO, molecular WHO recommended um, rapid tests for the initial diagnosis. And it is important to keep in mind that the previous recommendations on expert um, MTB RIF and MTB um, RIF Ultra and true not remain as, as were. Furthermore, we have on uh, recommended diagnostic tests for drugs uh, resistant tuberculosis, the low complexity automated nucleic acid amplification tests for the detection of resistance to isoniazid and second-line anti-TB agents, and the nine probe assays. Next slide, please. So for the increased access of MWRDs, um, we are supporting member states in reviewing and updating their national diagnostic algorithms based on the latest recommendations. We have started this process already in this year and have done so in two of, um, of the countries within the region and additional countries will follow. Furthermore, in order to be able to make the best use of MWRDs and the, rec the recommended strategy, it is extremely important to align diagnostic network organizations with the latest um, recommended algorithms and recommended diagnostic techniques. This will happen through analysis and assessment of diagnostic network organizations, leading to an optimization plan of diagnostic networks. And we highly recommend that countries also consider um, uh, putting these um, elements, um, especially the diagnostic network assessment and optimization in their global fund proposals. Next slide, please. Furthermore, supporting the region on quality assured diagnostic, uh, diagnostic suscept uh, drug susceptibility testing results, we have, um, as we have previously shown you, we have developed uh, um, a specific tool for supporting countries in addition to the annual uh, external quality assurance um, panel testing that they do, a thorough assessment 
with which provides recommendations for improving and sustaining uh, drug susceptibility quality assurance. Um, assessments have been piloted in two countries of the region and follow-up assessments have been, uh, have been done in 2022. And we are planning to train independent assessors in 2022, as well as assessing, uh, as well as training um, and, and uh, co-workers of the National Reference Laboratory, including the managers on using and performing these assessments on a regular basis. Next slide, please. Um, before going to biosafety, just one, uh, one additional point on uh, supporting the region on um, quality assured DSD and the use of the MWRDs. As uh, many of you know, we have published in 2022 an online training toolkit uh, on how to interpret rapid molecular test results. The training uh, has uh, received uh, for now interest of more than 25,000 people that have enrolled uh, in, the, in the training, and we are planning to further update that toolkit um, this year as well, based on our latest um, technical documents. Now, with regards to biosafety and airborne infection prevention and control, um, we have provided mentoring missions to the countries where engineers have been trained to sustain the capacity of and promote their, uh, their engagement at regional level on biosafety cabinets uh, within laboratories as one of the key um, components uh, to ensure biosafety. And we are planning to provide at least one, one mentoring mission to one of the high MDR burden countries where engineers were trained previously. Furthermore, um, we would like to develop a training curriculum to train laboratory workers for assessing the quality of biosafety maintenance by external engineers. This has been specifically asked by some of our member, member states and we're going, um, we have planned a training for Kazakhstan and other countries will follow. Furthermore, we are expecting the publication of uh, the operational handbook on the latest WHO TB IPC guidelines, and we will support that through online training sessions. And we're planning also the update of the ELI maintenance plan. Next slide, please. And Last but not least, we are also going to ensure the uptake and implementation of other WHO recommended techniques um, that may uh, come um, uh, very soon, including the next generation sequencing when they are introduced. For this year, a guideline development group is planned for targeted sequencing for diagnostic purposes, and new guidelines are planned for 2023. And um, since many countries are approaching us already on uh, building and strengthening their sequencing capacity, we have started building a stepwise capacity building um, for the um, capacity building tool for the implementation of new technologies through a questionnaire tool to define the scope, purpose, and strategy for a building and using national uh, sequencing capacities. And with this, I would thank you for your attention and sorry for the technical clinch that uh, we had earlier. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sude. And uh, with no further ado, I would like to pass uh, the floor to Dr. Aktai Gozalov, who will be presenting the updates and plans for the 2022 on tuberculosis. Aktai, floor is yours. Oh, it seems that I've been speaking to my computer as always. So hello, everyone. Can you see my slides? Not in the presenter mode. I'm trying to do it. So just a second, give me a second. Is it okay now? Yes, everything is fine. Please proceed, Aktai. Super. Uh, well, good afternoon, good morning, and uh, good evening to all of our participants. Thank you very much for being with us here. I will, uh, in my presentation, I will try to uh, skip the slides which are repeating uh, the others which have been already presented by the colleagues. But at the same time, there are some slides which are unavoidable to, and needs to, uh, your attention to be uh, drawn to this. Because as you see, that's still our region remain as one of the highest uh, the, uh, among the figures, absolute figures and the burden of the global TB, global uh, uh, drug resistant tuberculosis. And because of this, because that the nine countries out of 13 are located here, all our activities requires the important attention from each and every side. So um, as you can see, this slide, it's the one which been presented by Georgi just now, shows that still 
uh, the success rate, rates of the treatment of uh, drug resistant and the pre-XDR uh, TB are remain relatively low. The positive thing among of this, it's uh, that the uh, treatment outcomes been uh, slightly climbing up over the years, but uh, it's, unfortunately they are not reaching this even the 60%. And definitely, uh, among the over the next few years, when we will be analyzing the figures, we'll be definitely uh, considering the one of the main limiting factor as the COVID pandemic, which been happening, uh, still happens in our region, and it's uh, for the last 24 months. So, but uh, enabling factor is the one which been very detailedly explained by Fouad and the colleagues from the HQ, that over the last couple of years, uh, we've been enabled with a number of the fantastic documents, uh, the handbooks, the guidelines, the models, uh, which are systematizing the approach, the treatment regimens, the most novel uh, ide uh, ideas on the treatment of the drugs acceptable to be, uh, drug resistant tuberculosis and the uh, treatment of the childhood TB. So I'm not going to uh, speak long about this slide. You know that this is one of the uh, our know-how. That's uh, the and uh, I'm sure that our colleague Alexander Korotich later on will uh, speak about the details of using the modified uh, short treatment regimens as operational research in our region. But it's a, and it's a, then of course the one uh, about the the uh, drug communication or the uh, drug susceptible TB and drug resistant tuberculosis, which been speaking by Fuad in details. But I would like to stop on the slide regarding the the document which is uh, highlighting the treatment of the tuberculosis in children and adolescents. This document uh, clearly shows that the over the last a uh, few years, the uh, idea, the concept of bringing together efficiency, efficacy, and the short, short and possible uh, treatment regimen are become together. And with this, and the bidaquilin and delamanid can be used for the children even below the six years old. And which means that it's uh, instead of 12 months long term treatment, for instance, of the meningitis we can use the six months of treatment and the treatment of the four months instead of four, uh, six months, it's definitely also the progress which brings the children back to the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, their families and their two integrated approach shows on this. Decentralization is one of the key point. And I, uh, I would like to say that it's a, this document uh, clearly shows the the necessity of the socializing the children as soon as possible. Here you can see the very short pictures of the uh, sessions which have been done during the um, our virtual missions to the different countries. And during the uh, 22, 21 mission, we uh, uh, all the findings which have been discovered that have uh, been state, uh, standing with the transition to the fully oral treatment regimens the implementation and introduction of the new guidelines and definitely up, uh, uptaking on the re uh, recommendations through the different projects available in our region. Of course, the RGLC activities are fully uh, covered in our uh, the action plan. And of course, uh, it's uh, the one of the limiting factor which been said at earlier, where it's, uh, it's a war in Ukraine being the, one of the main point to block us and go ahead with the NTP review in countries which have been planned for this year. But nevertheless, we are going to uh, come back to this question as soon as possible. Uh, and uh, definitely we will uh, try to uh, attract as many countries as possible over the year. Uh, this year we are going to go ahead with the NTP reviews in Azerbaijan and Uzbekistan and uh, the Modus operandi, which been uh, been uh, operating this, still remain hybrid. It uh, means that the virtual and where possible and when possible, the on-site missions. Uh, considering that I'm already exceeded for the 12 seconds, the time limited for my presentation, I would like to stop here and will be happy to respond to the questions from the colleagues. 
back to you, over to you, Askar. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Aktai. And again, if there are any questions, would you please raise them in the chat window? So with that, I would like to ask Dr. Uh, Alexander Korotic to uh, provide an update on operational research and treatment and the uh, on, me, on, on everything that is related to MSTR operational research project. Thank you. Thank you so much, dear Askar, dear respectful MTP managers, dear, dear colleagues. Uh, it's a pleasure with this presentation to update you on the progress of the regional operational research initiatives that we are running and that have potential to bring us closer to achieving targets of global MTP, MTP strategy for drug resistant tuberculosis. As you remember, in December, in December 2019, we presented the Regional Operational Research Initiative on the introduction of modified shorter fully oral treatment regimens for uh, drug-resistant tuberculosis. Uh, I aimed to study effectiveness and safety of modified shorter treatment regimens for rifampicin-resistant tuberculosis consisting of group A and B drugs and delamanid, as shown by Dr. Gozalo before. And 14 countries of uh, Eastern Europe and Central Asia have joins this initiative of which 12 countries have already finished enrollment of patients into the regional cohort and more than uh, 2,800 patients were enrolled and records of these patients will be accounted in data analysis which we plan to conduct by the end of next year upon collection of 12 months follow-up outcomes. Moving further, uh, eight countries decided not to limit enrollment of patients uh, on MSTR regimens uh, just uh, to the regional cohort uh, only and proceeded with establishment of subsequent nationwide uh, country cohorts. Uh, same operational research protocol was cleared at country level and patients continued benefiting from uh, nine months long regimens. Um, we know that um, two more countries also plan to do so. Uh, there are some events that are planned within this initiative uh, on top of our continuous work, uh, which are quarterly missions, right? Um, but we also have planned a regional annual meeting of MSTR study teams, which was which is now planned for August. We had to postpone it from February to August due to the current events in Ukraine. In October, we will also conduct workshop on MSTR data analysis for data managers. And currently we are conducting mid-project evaluation of MSTR initiative in which all NTPs uh, implementing MSTR are invited to take part. And in the next few slides, I will explain the goals of this midterm evaluation. So uh, as you can see right now, uh, the regional MSTR initiative has entered its second half. Um, countries continue treatment of patients and uh, continue 12 months follow-up. Uh, but uh, lessons learned at the preparatory stage and during patient enrollment are not yet forgotten. So it's an ideal moment and ideal opportunity to capture country experiences. That is why we have designed, it, designed um, mid-project evaluation. Um, the goals of which are to describe bottlenecks and enablers during implementation of operational research on MSTR at regional, country, and uh, study site level, to assess impact of the initiative on programmatic practice in participating countries, and to provide recommendations and inform further implementation of operational research on the MSTR and other research initiatives in the area of tuberculosis or uh, MDR-resistant tuberculosis. Uh, so we basically want to see whether MSTR initiative had brought any positive changes in routine programmatic practices, contributed to research um, and clinical capacity building, and how experience of this initiative can be transferred out to other new research projects or facilitate introduction of new treatment regimens in future. Uh, this is um, the evaluation timeline. You can see, uh, you can have a closer look at it uh, in the materials of this session. And also in the background materials folder, there is also a short document describing an evaluation process. So basically evaluation will consist of two components, document review and qualitative research. Within qualitative research component, we will interview MSTR task force members, representatives of national tuberculosis programs and research team members at country and at study site level, and we also uh, will interview partners. So two weeks ago, we sent invitations to national tuberculosis program managers and principal investigators to nominate participants for the interviews. And let me kindly remind um, you to respond by 20th of May so we can proceed with, in uh, with interviews in May, June as planned. We aim to present findings of this evaluation at the annual meeting of, of MSTR study uh, research teams uh, in August 2022. 
Uh, also building on experience of MSTR operational research, we prepared uh, a new regional operational research initiative on concomitant management of drug-resistant tuberculosis and hepatitis C. The key aim of this initiative is to facilitate introduction of concomitant treatment for both diseases for patients with co-infection. Uh, because available evidence suggests that uh, there are no drug-to-drug -drug interactions between directly acting agents for hepatitis C and group A and B drugs and some of the group C drugs for drug-resistant tuberculosis. By now, we developed the regional operational research package, which includes operational research protocol, clinical guide, guide for management of adverse reactions, data uh, collection instrument, can country readiness assessment checklist, and qualitative add-on study. And this initiative will be presented on 23rd of May for the first cohort of six countries. And in subsequent months, uh, we will be we will be inviting uh, more countries from the list of 18 high TB priority countries of our region to join the workshops for the next cohort. Uh, BIPAL operational research projects are also progressing in many countries uh, with support of KNCV and WHO. As you have heard from Dr. Mirzaev's presentations, there are changes expected concerning the BIPAL regiment in new WHO recommendations, and it will provide also basis uh, and further opportunities to adjust uh, protocols of currently ongoing BIPAL operational research projects in line with the new recommendations when they are released. And finally, uh, we are successfully running Virtual Medical Concilium. Uh, this, is, this is an initiative that provides uh, advice to countries on management of complicated cases and also supports our operational research initiatives. More than uh, 150 patients have benefited from consultations of the Concilium. And we remind all, the, all NTPs that you have an opportunity to submit questions on management of patients uh, with DRTB for review of the Concilium. And we also continue hosting our monthly capacity building webinars. 15 webinars had been successfully conducted. And in June, we plan to host two more webinars dedicated to new WHO recommendations and WHO guidelines on childhood TB. And yesterday, we sent invitations for the first one which uh, on TB screening, uh, prevention, and diagnosis in children. And we will be honored if you could join, uh, as it will take place on Universal uh, Children's Day. Um, uh, so you can get more details uh, on the research initi initiative from uh, uh, these slides and closed in the event folder. And I thank you uh, for your attention. Back to Oscar. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, and uh, uh, for, for sharing the news that is important for the uh, for our managers of the national TV programs of the Eastern Europe and Central Asia specifically. So, with no further ado, I'm asking Georgi Kuchohidze to provide an update on the digital health uh, technologies in TV. Thank you. Um, thank you, Oscar. Um, so I will just provide a very quick update, uh, status update on using the digital health technologies in TB response. <clears throat> um, we continue supporting the introduction of um, the introduction and scale up of the use of the video supported treatment in the region. And the focus is on the part of the region with the highest um, TB burden which is Eastern Europe and Central Asia. Um, we supported few countries with the adaptation of the tool, um, which included the selection of the platform, um, choosing the hosting solution, development of guiding and regulatory documents um, for the in-country authorization of the concept, and finally, the training of the personnel uh, involved in the VST implementation uh, at the country level. Um, so this is a snapshot of the status of the use of video supported treatment uh, in the selected countries. Um, you can see the share of the patients um, who are on ambulatory care that are enrolled in the VST in, the, in, in different countries of our region. Um, so we also plan to introduce uh, an operational research component to assess the acceptability and effectiveness of, uh, of VST in the countries uh, where it's being implemented um, at the programmatic level uh, and also is used countrywide. Um, the generic protocol is under development and we will share the details um, as soon as we have it with you. Um, we will also uh, continue supporting the introduction and also the scale up of the use of VST in the region 
So please do not hesitate to contact us should you need any support, should you feel that you need any support from the uh, regional office. Um, another digital health tool uh, recommended to use in the high TB burden setting uh, is computer-aided um, detection of TB, so-called CAT tb um, which allows an automated reading of digital chest x-rays um, for detecting the abnormalities and uh, also can be used for uh, TB screening. Um, so we did the assessment of CAT tb implementation status. Um, uh, there were interviews um, that were conducted with uh, country representatives um, responsible for the implementation of, of uh, CAT tb as well as with the partners providing technical support to, to countries. Um, and from this uh, assessment, we learned that some countries are already using the tool and um, others managed to include it in their proposals to the Global Fund. So we expect that more countries will be using the tool in the coming years. Um, the assessment uh, I mentioned revealed some challenges. Um, with operational aspects in countries already using the tool. Um, but one of the core challenges identified uh, was um, uh, setting up a country-specific threshold to reach the acceptable uh, specificity and uh, sensitivity uh, for detecting uh, uh, possible presumptive TB cases. So in the coming months, together with our partners, we'll be providing technical support uh, to countries in the introduction and use of um, uh, CAT-TB tool, um, including the support in calibration using um, available uh, technical guidance. And uh, more details uh, will be shared with, uh, with you soon. Uh, both uh, video-supported treatment and CAT-TB are also mentioned in the regional action plan in the new regional action plan um, together with the, uh, the importance of having the case-based uh, real-time TB data uh, which is also outlined in the regional action plan. So we'll further support the introduction of um, case-based uh, digital surveillance systems uh, in the very few countries where it's still not um, accessible uh, countrywide, um, and there are still few countries in the region um, that um, are not able to use the countrywide uh, the, the case-based surveillance systems, digital surveillance systems countrywide. So we'll be uh, supporting uh, countries with the introduction. Uh, yeah, this this was in, in short. Um, back to you, Oscar. Thank you, Georgi, for this quick update. And indeed, this the work on the introduction of digital health solutions for all technical areas of TB uh, will be continued by the regional office. Now, uh, floor to Sayaha to provide an update on the uh, uh, operationalization of multi sectoral accountability framework. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon again, dear colleagues. Can you see the screen? Uh, my presentation. Yeah, thank you. And uh, dear colleagues, uh, um, thank you for my colleagues, uh, uh, previous uh, um, uh, speakers. Uh, they, they talk about the programmatic management of tuberculosis. Um, and uh, if you uh, know the role of engagement of other, other sectors and other stakeholders in TB response is also very important to increase the commitment to get the uh, targets yeah, and uh, to uh, increase and strengthen the accountability. And uh, Dr. Teresa Kasaeva this morning uh, during her uh, welcome speech, she mentioned a lot about the engagement of other sectors and the multi-sectoral accountability framework and multi-sectoral response, especially uh, considering the um, uh, social nature of tuberculosis, uh, uh, the uh, determinants, uh, uh, multiple determinants and risk factor of tuberculosis, and especially considering the situation this COVID-19 pandemic and the humanitarian crisis in our region, which slowing down the implementation and to be response. And uh, uh, this tool um, I'm going to present you and to update on its implementation in our region. This is the tool which really helps to engage other sectors. Uh, it helps to engage other additional resources from other sectors and to increase the accountability 
by other sectors in TB response. So in my uh, short presentation, I will uh, introduce you shortly to this uh, framework and uh, what has been done in our region uh, so far and plans for uh, 2022. So very uh, short background. Um, uh, the, the main message in these uh, slides that um, uh, MAFTB development of the accountability framework, uh, the tool which helps uh, to engage other sectors in TB response, which brings additional resources, which uh, improve and strengthen and coordinate, coordinated response to tuberculosis and which increase the accountability, not by Ministry of Health and National TB uh, programs, but, but uh, other sector, sectors and other stakeholders. That um, was um, requested by the first time was requested by ministers of health during the first uh, WHO Global Ministerial Conference and then a year later during the UN Global Assembly high level meeting, head of states, they committed on multi-sectoral and multi-stakeholder response and they asked the WHO to develop this uh, tool or framework in and the 2019 WHO developed uh, this uh, framework and the issue and since that uh, time the WHO is providing coordination, guidance and support for adapting and implementing this tool. In 2020 WHO developed the uh, tool to assess the baseline situation uh, at, uh, at countries to, to see uh, the engagement of other sectors and stakeholders uh, to multi-sectoral TB response and uh, uh, providing a technical support to its implementation, which will be used then for uh, developing the vision and how to engage other sectors and improve uh, coordination, uh, collaboration and accountability at national level. And uh, uh, in 2020, um, WHO uh, issued the progress towards achieving the uh, global TB targets and towards achieving the political declaration of UN um, high level meeting. And uh, we see that uh, um, still we are behind the, um, uh, achieving the global targets and uh, based, uh, considering that uh, one of the recommendations of this uh, report is fully activate high level leadership and urgently reduce TB deaths and drive multi-sectoral action. And as you know, next year, uh, also Dr. Uh, um, uh, Teresa Kasaiba mentioned there will be the next UN high level meeting where head of states should report back on the implementation of multi sectoral accountability framework. Therefore, we, uh, WHO, are here to provide technical assistance to countries to adapt and implement this tool. And um, this year, uh, together with the Global TV program, and we are also providing this in input developing guidance. It's a very detailed guide how to adapt and implement MAC-TB uh, at, uh, at country level. And here you can see what is the um, uh, multi-sectoral accountability framework. In, in short, we call it MAC-TB and it has uh, four uh, essential elements. This is the um, a commitment. So uh, at national level, uh, countries should commit and uh, should set targets and the commitments in line, in line with the global commitment and target. And then they should implement those commitments into uh, multi-sectoral actions. So a uh, mechanism should be in place to monitor uh, and uh, track the implementation of those actions and achievement of the national targets. And then mechanism should be at the country level to review those achievements and uh, to uh, make uh, um, uh, strategic recommendations. So review should be multi-sectoral. So here we are talking not about the uh, NTP and Ministry of Health uh, response to tuberculosis, but we are talking here about the multi-sectoral. For example, if we are talking about the monitoring and reporting, it's not only monitoring done by Ministry of Health, but the monitoring of activities which should be done by other ministries. Um, what uh, have been done in our region to um, uh, uh, operationalize MAF-TB? So we started in 2020 by uh, providing consultation, conducting consultation with the main uh, global and regional partners on how to adapt and implement uh, this tool at, uh, uh, at, in our region. And the result of this uh, consultation is documented in the report. 
So in parallel, we uh, together with the um, uh, in coordination and the, um, collaboration with the Global TB program, we developed the regional concept where we suggested countries on action points and tools which needed to have in place in order to adapt and implement a multi-sectoral accountability framework. And we also um, helped countries to adopt the baseline assessment tool and provided close technical support to its implementation. And the result of the implementation, uh, result of the assessment, uh, it serves as evidence-based information for developing the country vision, uh, the uh, roadmap on how to uh, strengthen accountability and how to strengthen multi-sectoral response. So these tools we um, piloted in five countries uh, of our region, it's the Republic of Belarus, Moldova, Kazakhstan, Ukraine, and Tajikistan. And along with this, we also um, continue providing strategic advice in uh, development of national roadmaps, which should be uh, tailored to country context, strategic advice in setting the composition and roles and responsibilities of national multi-sectoral coordination bodies, and the high level review mechanism and strategic advice on addressing MAP TB in the national strategic plans for TB and the funding application to uh, external donors. So, yeah. I'm, I'm, apologies, uh, you have one minute, please. Thank you. Yeah, I'm almost finishing. Thank you, Aspar. Here you can see the status of for piloting of TB adaptation, uh, MAP TB adaptation and launch. It. Uh, unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic and the uh, humanitarian crisis in our region it slowed down a little bit the progress. But you see that uh, almost all countries, they have a focal point on MAF tb They conducted national consultation to launch MAF tb They conducted baseline assessment and they are in a different stage of developing their uh, national MAF tb roadmaps. Uh, all countries, they have a multi-sectoral coordination body in place, but it should be strengthened to meet, uh, uh, fully meet the requirements of uh, multi-sectoral accountability framework. And the high-level review mechanism, uh, countries they are at the stage of uh, either uh, defining uh, or they have plan in their national uh, to be um, strategic plans to establish the, that mechanism. And the uh, MAP is uh, one of the priority areas in the WHO uh, uh, Regional Action Plan. And uh, in 2020, we are uh, continuing supporting countries in uh, uh, pilot countries in uh, adaptation and implementation of MAP TV. We're also encouraging uh, other countries and we are ready to provide support for uh, especially TB high burden countries in uh, adaptation and implementation of this framework. We uh, included uh, MAF TB in the uh, forthcoming NTB review. As my colleague of I mentioned, we are planning uh, two reviews in 2022. And then we are uh, supporting member states in the uh, preparation to the 2023 UN high level meeting. And we continue engaging civil society to uh, implementation of MAF TB in our region. And um, MAP TB will be one of the priority area of agenda of the 16 CAP TB meeting uh, this year. And after the uh, issuing of the global TB, uh, uh, global guidance on MAP TB adaptation and implementation, we will provide capacity building workshops to uh, our countries uh, to further scale up and implement this uh, instrument. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Sayohat, uh, and uh, for providing these updates. So uh, because of the shortness of time, uh, we will shorten the questions and answers and the closing. But nevertheless, before that, we, I would like to give a floor to uh, the, uh, Dr. Maria Rabiglione, Dr. Simon Villa, and Paolo Colombani to present an update on the Unite for TB, the consortium to develop uh, the new tuberculosis uh, regimens. And uh, I think this is very interesting for the member states uh, and national TB, uh, national TB programs of the member states of the WHO European region. Thank you, Oscar. Can, can you confirm that the screen, my screen is... Yes. <coughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so my name is Pierpaolo de Colombani, consultant uh, of the University of Milan in Italy, and actually in... Uh, in the uh, team uh, of uh, Mario Raviglione that uh, you remember uh, the um, former director of the uh, Global TB program in Geneva and Dr. Simone Villa. 
And we, all of us, uh, thank you very much for the WHO Regional Office uh, for Europe and the TB team for um, funding the, the time in this important meeting. Um, University of Milan is one of the partners uh, implementing the Unite for TB project, uh, which is a major project uh, um, uh, seven years uh, duration uh, started uh, uh, last uh, June, and uh, we continue up to May 2023. It is an um, um, example of uh, public-private partnership. You see that a total budget of under the 85 uh, million uh, uh, euros uh, is alpha coming from a European Federation of Pharmaceutical Industries and Associations and uh, and associated partners and uh, the other half is uh, coming from the innovative medicine initiative of the european union um, uh, the objectives of the united for tb project are uh, five the first is to accelerate the clinical evaluation on new drugs and new drug combination and this is for both uh, uh, drug resistant tuberculosis and drug susceptible to tuberculosis. Uh, second objective is to establish a network in the world uh, able to run um, phase two clinical trials. Third objective is to integrate uh, biomarkers for, of treatment success into adaptive uh, uh, trial design. Um, employ advanced uh, uh, pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic models and employ artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques. And all this uh, to, um, would be developed uh, for uh, running the clinic to support uh, the implementation of the phase two clinical trials, but uh, will be also potentially used uh, in uh, next phase uh, three clinical trials. And then uh, the last object is uh, overall uh, developing new standards uh, uh, for uh, the development of uh, new TB drugs and new TB drug combination um, and uh, upgrading the clinical trials methodology. And this is to improve efficiency. Efficiency basically that will be in uh, decreasing the timing of this uh, required for the clinical trials and therefore uh, decreasing the costs um, required for that. There are uh, almost 90 tasks uh, in this, under this project. And um, so we just have to try to summarize this slide, uh, the, the main ones. You see pharmacokinetic uh, and pharmacodynamics modeling uh, uh, will be in um, the three uh, um, years of 2023, 2025, and 2027. And this is in support in uh, the uh, conduction of, uh, of uh, a phase 2A, B, and C clinical trials that we start uh, in 2023. Uh, other important steps is the establishment of a microbiological strain uh, biobank in 2024. Uh, um, use of artificially artificial intelligence machine learning and this is already started uh, in uh, last year and uh, we continue the role uh, time of the project in uh, supporting the clinical trials uh, same uh, support to clinical trials will be uh, through the digi digital digital adherence technology and of course, uh, it's uh, very important to involve uh, communities uh, with the establishment of community advisory board uh, that has been already established last year and is uh, currently working uh, and uh, the engagement with uh, all other stakeholders uh, and that is in red. And this is what we, University of Milan, is uh, are, are trying to do. And this is uh, uh, already started uh, last year with the development of standard tools for communication. And uh, this important, uh, we already interview about uh, 40 stakeholders, uh, and uh, but this is today the first um, opportunity that we are uh, participating in a regional conference. Uh, and um, uh, in addition of some, uh, um, bilateral uh, discussion we already have had with some uh, of, of the countries. Um, 
is a major uh, project with uh, you you have seen a major uh, funding and uh, with uh, quite a number of partners uh, 31 uh, uh, consociated uh, to work together uh, and uh, most of them are uh, um, located in the European Union but there are all, also other importance uh, in the United States, like at TB Alliance, uh, CPAF and University of San Francisco, and uh, in South Africa with a task. Uh, the public and private uh, partnership I mentioned before. Uh, so in uh, public uh, are uh, in blue color, and uh, the red ones are uh, private. Uh, you see Janssen, uh, GlaxoSmith and Klein, and Otsuka Free major. Uh, Pharmaceutical companies uh, are participating uh, in this uh, in this consortium. Um, uh, there is uh, a, a overall coordinator in Netherlands, Radboud uh, University of uh, UMC. Um, um, there is uh, a scientific leader in uh, in Germany, a project leader in Spain, GlaxoSmith and Klein. And there are uh, three clinical uh, leaders, uh, one for each uh, wave uh, uh, of uh, impl implementation of the project. Um, the work of uh, these uh, 31 uh, partners uh, and uh, is organizing work packages. Uh, and uh, so the partners are uh, variously involved uh, in uh, these work packages. There are 12 of them. Uh, and these 12 work packages are uh, uh, grouped in work streams, three work streams. The first work stream is uh, dealing with uh, clinical trials. So you see that there is a work package dealing with microb microbiology and bacter bacterial uh, biobank, and another one of uh, biomarkers, uh, and uh, other two, one for a phase 2A clinical trial, the other for a phase uh, 2B and C clinical trial. There is a work patch 10 that is dealing with uh, data uh, sharing. Then there is uh, the work stream two that is in support in uh, the uh, uh, work stream one uh, uh, implementing the clinical trials. And then there is a work stream three that is dealing with management, overall management, stakeholder engagement. And our University of Milan is part of a work package 11 uh, implementation, dissemination, and communication. Um, the project, uh, mm, just to simplify, can be compared to a Formula One uh, uh, race. Um, so in, uh, in the, this Formula One races, uh, there is a pit stop where the cars are assembled, are put it together with different parts, and then uh, they're uh, based on uh, previous studies and experience and uh, computer data, and then they're put it in the pit, they run uh, the course and um, the race, and then uh, every sometime they stop uh, at the pit stop, uh, and then they are uh, um, uh, try to uh, improve their performances by maybe replacing some car uh, the parts uh, and uh, um, changing the, 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 the wheels and so on. So the same uh, similarly is uh, with uh, United 40 B. Um, so there will be. Um, uh, uh, different treatment regimens composed by different compounds, and these uh, treatment regimens will be um, initially, of course, uh, uh, assembled, uh, uh, created uh, based on in vitro animal studies and uh, uh, clinical trial phase one. And then uh, in during the clinical trial phase two, will be the, the race, basically, will be um, periodically assessed and then uh, um, also uh, change for improvement. And uh, the clinical trials are uh, uh, still not uh, completely defined. There is a short list of 30 uh, of them, and you see that are basically located in South America, in Europe, in Africa, and, and in Asia. In the um, compounds are uh, a combination of uh, 
uh, already known uh, uh, drugs uh, and uh, uh, other uh, um, new compounds uh, that are uh, listed in the free boxes uh, at the upper part of the slides. Uh, a free the box in uh, uh, um, red color that is. Uh, or compounds that have been already passed the uh, clinical uh, trial phase one, uh, then uh, in, in preclinical uh, stage are uh, those in, uh, in uh, the green box uh, and uh, uh, still to develop uh, are those in the blue box. So this is basically the, the last slide and just uh, to summarize what um, uh, is uh, a relation that, be, that can be established uh, and we would like to establish uh, with uh, all of you. Um, so it's basically the providing the information as uh, we are doing uh, today, but also provide the regular dates in future and uh, promote uh, uh, communication and, uh, and coordination among the stakeholders. Uh, and uh, um, eventually at the end of the project, uh, provide uh, uh, new treatment regimens that uh, we hope will be sort of uh, revolutionary. So there is already a, a been described in previous presentation, a revolution already incurred mm, mm, in the treatment of, uh, of uh, tuberculosis, drug susceptible drug resistance with a drastic decrease in duration uh, uh, so the idea of this project is uh, possibly to come out with a universal uh, uh, tri uh, treatment regimen. What um, you may consider to um, contribute uh, in, uh, to the project is of the spread of information of the project and the regular updates uh, given. Uh, and then engage more stakeholders that are, there are so many in each country. And of course, in a, eventually when these new treatment regimens will be ready also to uh, uh, support in each of capacity the, the rapid uptake. As I mentioned, this is the last slide and we try to keep some um, um, a space for questions if possible, but uh, I know that um, Dr. Simone Villa and, uh, and, and, and Professor Mario Raviglione are also participating uh, uh, in, this, uh, in this meeting and I would uh, uh, like to give a word uh, to, to Mario um, for uh, some uh, comments if he wants uh, uh, and, and thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Paolo. And uh, again, uh, would like to ask if Mario would like to give some remarks. Mario, we cannot hear you. Okay. <clears throat> Mario, your microphone is not working. Yeah, probably. Yeah, now it's working. It's working now? Yes. Ah, okay, so sorry. Uh, um, and uh, how many minutes do we have, uh, Ascar? Because I know you're you're under pressure. So yes, we are approaching the end of the uh, of the of the NTP managers meeting. So uh, I highly appreciate if you could be short. Thank you. Yeah, no, no, uh, very short. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for accommodating uh, this uh, this presentation. The the purpose, as Pierre Paul explained, and I just want to summarize, it, is really that of making sure that NTP managers throughout the European regions, regions are informed uh, about this, uh, this major project after all. Um, uh, as we consider all the NTP managers, uh, the real stakeholders, right? So uh, what we want out of this presentation is simply your feedback, is simply to understand if you have any special uh, uh, requirement, for example, for registration, so we heard uh, uh, recently talking to other countries that they have to go through special processes. And for example, that means certain things right from the beginning so that we can inform those who uh, run the trials uh, that uh, some countries need special type of, uh, um, of uh, for example, of discussions at the beginning to, to be able later on, hopefully in the next three to four years to, um, to, to, to um, adopt something that could be 
uh, in a way that's the thinking here, revolutionary, right? Even shortening more what is available now for drug resistant and for drug uh, 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 susceptible tuberculosis. Uh, one of the intentions, uh, as we learned last week in Munich, we have the first general assembly of the project, is really to test even two month type of regimens with completely new drugs. So um, what we need is exactly that type of feedback. If you have any special requirements or if you need additional information, you can please contact us uh, through uh, the European office directly, whatever you choose. But this is really uh, for you to be informed. And uh, I'm not surprised, for example, to learn in another couple of countries outside of these regions that NTP managers were not aware that trial sites were actually prepared for the uh, for this clinical trial in their own country. And this, you know, coming, you know, as you all know, coming from WHO with Pier Paolo, we are very conscious about the situation, and we don't want to have that uh, the type of uh, of situation created. So it's really a, a, a general information type of uh, of presentation. And uh, thank you again, uh, Oscar, for accommodating it. Uh, thank you very much, Ma Mario Pierpaolo and Simone for presenting uh, this uh, this updates. Of course, uh, many of the member states already have been aware of that, but this is a, again a wonderful opportunity to share the information and uh, with the request for the uh, NTPs to, to spread the word. So now we are approaching the end of the NTP managers meeting. Again, the agenda is very intense, but within the allocated time that we have, it's not hard to uh, uh, accommodate all the aspects. But nevertheless, we try to uh, provide the most uh, important updates of what we do. Now we would like to open the floor to yeah. the very short discussion session. Please ask your questions. And if uh, some of the questions are not addressed, we would be happy to uh, provide responses in written. So um, we'll be opening the floor uh, to anyone who is raising hands. So dear colleagues, feel free to raise hands and mute yourself and uh, raise your comments. Those are very much related to the activities that have been presented to you as our plans for 2023. Since your comments towards the composition of the action plan has been already accommodated and presented to you. Nevertheless, if you still have any burning concerns, you're welcome. Uh, but we would really appreciate your uh, comments related to the activities on the 2023 here. Um, I see Jana, would you like Jana to uh, take a floor? Yes, uh, yes, there, there is a comment from Jana Tirleva. Jana, please unmute your microphone. Добрый день, уважаемые коллеги, уважаемые NTP менеджеры, коллеги из Европейского офиса Всемирной организации здравоохранения. Огромная благодарность за то, что вы предоставляете стратегически важную информацию для того, чтобы сейчас все страны имели возможность пересмотреть текущие свои процессы. Также мы очень поддерживаем то, что сейчас нам был представлен комплексный стратегический план Всемирной организации здравоохранения по борьбе с туберкулезом. Конечно, в Украине есть ряд особенностей, которые сегодня нас сдерживают от амбициозного влияния на программу противодействия туберкулезу. Но, тем не менее, мы также продолжаем свою работу, мы не останавливаемся. И в условиях военных действий мы говорим о более важности вопросов туберкулеза, так как пациенты действительно более уязвимы, пациенты мигрируют. Таким образом, мы также не будем стоять на месте, мы будем стараться в этих непростых условиях дальше усовершенствовать свои программы и учитывать те современные рекомендации Всемирной организации здравоохранения. Сегодня мы слышали ряд очень долгожданных для нас новостей в отношении и новых схем, новых возможностей для пациентов. Мы уверены, что все это также актуально, несмотря ни на какие условия, потому что речь идет о человеческих жизнях, речь идет о сокращении лечения, речь идет о доступе к более качественному, более эффективному, более безопасному лечению. Поэтому мы каждый день благодарим всех партнеров за то, что вы помогаете нам, за то, что продвигаете вопросы Украины, за то, что оказывается международная техническая поддержка, экспертная поддержка в этих условиях. В общем-то, еще раз всем благодарна за то, что вообще сегодня есть такое мероприятие, 
и рады всех видеть. Мы уверены, что с таким планом действительно мы сможем сделать существенный прорыв в отношении туберкулеза. Конечно, внимание к Украине в этом вопросе, учитывая, что мы страна европейского региона, оно абсолютно оправдано. И мы со своей стороны все сделаем возможное, чтобы, в общем-то, картина противодействия туберкулезу была в ногу с теми достижениями, которые есть на сегодняшний день. В общем-то, это такой общий комментарий по итогам проведенных несколько часов вместе с командами и партнерами из других стран. Dear Jana, thank you very much uh, for your wonderful comment. And uh, again, uh, we are very much welcoming our continuation of our collaboration and working together on ensuring the continuity of treatment and care uh, for uh, patients from Ukraine uh, who are currently in uh, finding themselves in another different uh, and difficult circumstances outside of their home country. And also, uh, thank you very much for uh, continuing uh, uh, this wonderful work on uh, in, in Ukraine. So there is a comment from Daria Chiadaeva for the opportunity for the member states to provide comments on the latest draft to the tuberculosis action plan. Again, thank you very much, Daria, for this question. And uh, we would be welcoming if in written if there will be any comments to the action plan. And then we will set up the bilateral call uh, with the member states uh, to discuss uh, the comments. And this is like what we would highly appreciate to do uh, within the next uh, two uh, weeks. And, uh, please uh, feel free to approach WHO Euro for that. Uh, any other comments or questions? Meanwhile, while we are waiting for any anyone who raised to raise the hand, uh, I would like also to make an announcement that has been also shared by Dr. Marike van de Werf uh, from the uh, ECDC that tomorrow and on Friday, the WHO Euro, uh, the Cain CV Tuberculosis Foundation and, K and ECDC are conducting the uh, World Hesse workshops that also will be conducted in virtual format. And uh, we hope to, to see many of you there during the next two days. The invitations has been shared in, uh, by us before. Oscar, can I make just a quick comment? Please do so, Mario. I want just to say that uh, uh, I am uh, I am very uh, happy to hear the progress on uh, the implementation of the multi-sectoral accountability framework. That is an absolutely fundamental tool. You know, we devoted a lot of thinking on that back in 2016 and 17, right? And then we went to Moscow, and then after Moscow, it was the general. Uh, uh, the UN uh, General Assembly uh, and the World Health Assembly, et cetera, et cetera. But the implementation of it is fundamental. And being able to monitor what's going on in other sectors has direct implications on what we try to do with the elimination of tuberculosis. So it's really important job. And if, uh, if I were still at WHO, I would say this is my top priority, is how to merge the thinking about the outcomes in tuberculosis with uh, uh, the work in other sectors. That is absolutely fundamental. Thank and congratulations for that. Yeah, thank you very much, Mario, for congratulating uh, the WHO Euro for this work. And again, uh, as everything that is uh, being developed right now at the global level, there is a, a, indeed uh, an instrumental but humble contribution from the WHO Euro side. So uh, again, uh, despite the current difficulties and circumstances and challenges, uh, we are uh, working on this important area of work that is right, not technical, but require the involvement and accountability of many sectors and actors. So um, thank you. So with no further ado, if there are no questions, uh, we would like to uh, finish the uh, this 17th meeting of the uh, National Tuberculosis Programs and National Focal Points uh, for TB in the WHO European region. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention, uh, despite your busy schedules and uh, different circumstances. And again, we would be happy to um, answer all the comments and questions that are related to any of the technical areas that we have been highlighted today, related to the plans, related to the regional tuberculosis action plan, 
And again, I would like to repeat on behalf of our team in Euro and also on behalf of the whole WHO uh, in the global TV program and, and uh, country offices that the new documents that we are uh, developing right now and that will be in, uh, submitted for the endorsement in September to the Regional Committee for Europe is a joint document. And this is the document that is providing us the clear strategic direction on how to move forward jointly and reach the global target. Again, thank you very much for joining. I would like to uh, also use an opportunity to thank our interpreters, Mila and Tatiana. Also thank our administrative and support team, Maria and Svetlana, and also Andrei Dadu for his uh, coordination and leadership on the technical things. And also the team of the colleagues in the WHO, Regional Office for Europe, and country offices for their great work and participation. Thank you. Thank you the meeting Mark. is over. See you tomorrow in the Volkhazia. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.